Live from the greatest city in the world. It ain't what it used to be, but it's the only place for me. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Che Reaction, Records and Skateboards, and Your Core Hardcore Fan Page. What's happening, everybody around the world? I miss you. I hope you're well. I hope everything's you and your family are well. Hey ho, let's go. Exactly. Hey ho, bro, let's go. Hey ho, let's go. <laughs> What's going on? Wow, you know, great, uh, great show today coming up with some old friends. Excited about that. What's up, Federico? What's up, John? How you doing, buddy? Um, everybody else out there, upstate Rick. What's up? You're ready. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm ready. We're ready. Mob style. Let's go. Should be good. Should be a good one. Um, you know, want to sh- remind you that next up, I know we barely got this one started, but I just want to remind you that next up on Wednesday is uh, Keith from Cause for Alarm. And we're stoked on that. Real excited about that. So that should be cool. Some old school, some old school shiznit. El Nino, listening from Wisconsin. Right on, brother. Hold the line. They'll be on soon. What's up in France, brother? Yo, you know what it is? You know what it is today? Yo, it's shout out Sunday. So, yo, it's shout out Sunday. So, if you need to shout anybody out, post it. If you really need to shout somebody out, like something serious, spend a buck or two and do a super chat. And I'll fucking throw that right on here. Hello from Italy. What's happening in Italy? Man. Morizino. What's happening? Jeez, you look like Marilyn Monroe in that picture, hon. <laughs> Hi, Johanna. Whoa, where are you, Johanna? What's happening? Christian, what's up? Christian Koresh, what's happening? Lucas in France, what it is, what it is. What's up from the Isle of Long? Anyway. Uh, just to recap, wow, that last show we did with um, um, with what the uh, uh, what's his name, Martin Atkins. Who knew that Gigi Allen kicked the shit out of him? I didn't. Wow, that was fucked up. Japped him out in the bathroom, broke his nose and his jaw. Woo! I didn't see that coming. That was unbelievable. What's up in Portugal, brother? Hey, Colorado. Yo, Derek. All right, Urban Street Bike Warriors represent Colorado as fuck. All right, Detroit holding it down. Pablo in Chile, what's happening? Wow. Whoa, Jimmy Garcia. There you go. <laughs> I see you laughing over there, lads. Jimmy Garcia, some antidote alumni. What's going on, Jimmy Garcia? Yeah, that was a great show with Martin Atkins. That, that was really great. So... You know, we got Keith coming up, and then a week from today, you asked for it, you got it. We got Jay Peter from uh, Mind Force coming on and Pillars of Ivory. So, Jay Peter coming up a week from today. Yeah, we got a lot of great shows coming up, you know, and we'll, we'll go over some of them. But in the meantime, let's bring on the hardcore Shutterbug. Let's see what's going on from the Isle of Long. Steven Messina. What's, what's up? Happening? What's up? What's up? I'm ready. You're ready. We're ready. Harbaugh I'm ready. Shutterbug. I'm ready. <laughs> it's Sunday. Very excited. I'm ready already. <laughs> I am. Hey, it's shout out Sunday. I want to shout out uh, some friends in Germany. They just sent me this. This is a, a beautiful German magazine called Hardline, uh, which features uh, this shot here uh, of this band Hitman that I took, made the cover. So I'm very happy. Also, the inside shots. Excellent, excellent traditional metal band out of Queens, New York. New album called Destroy All Humans. Phenomenal. Excellent, excellent metal record. Great magazine. There's my shout out. Destroy All Humans? Destroy All Humans is the name of the new album. Isn't that like a Planet of the Apes kind of thing? Uh, Well, we got it coming, believe me. (laughs) The humans must be destroyed. Get the humans. That's right. (laughs) The only good human is a dead human. That's it. We might have to do another who, Planet of the Apes show. Who is, that? is that General Urko? Ursus. Ursus. Not to be confused with Urko. Urko was on the TV series. Right. Right. Yep. Right. God, it feels like a thousand years ago that we did the Planet of the Apes episode. 
All right, here we go. Let's do it. Picture Let's of the day. Photo of the day or picture of the day, whatever, whatever makes sense. Shot of the day. Shot of the day. Scooby-Doo, where are you? Let me clear the deck here. Shot of the day. Uh, listen, you knuckleheads, you know the drill. <laughs> Wrong answers only. <laughs> here we go. Bring it. Stephen Messina, Hardcore Shutterbug. Photo of the day. Boom. Here we go. Wow. Interesting. See what we got here. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. Wrong answers only. Is it Iggy Pop? Close. He's Close. definitely, he's definitely, is it, he, is it, he, is, it he, is it Madonna? <laughs> Another one. Is it Madonna? Two Madonnas. One is Madonna, it, two Madonna, three it, Madonna, four. Is it Gigi Allen? <laughs> Is it Johnny Puke? Is it Scott Weiland? No, no. Is it Diamond David Lee Roth? <laughs> Listen, you know. Is it Drew Stone? Yep. Listen, man. Yeah, I don't know what to make it at. Is it the Plasmatics? <laughs> Is it Stiv Baders? We got some close ones creeping in here. Miley Ray. Who's Miley Ray? Is that Miley Cyrus? I wish. I love Miley Cyrus. Me too. <laughs> Man. She makes my heart skip a beat. Is it Wayne Gretzky? Good one, Miley. <laughs> that is good. Wayne Gretzky. Very good. See, these are getting good. Is it Susie Quattro? That's good. Good one, Jim, Jimmy Garcia. All right. I see, you know, I see a couple of the right answers. Hold on. Good, but, good, but let's, good. Uh, Danielle out in Long Island. In Long Island. Is it Wendy O? Nope, if it was nope. Wendy O, her tits would be hanging out. That's so, true. That's yeah. true. Is it Paul Stanley? <laughs> Is it Darby Crash? It's Paul Simon. <laughs> Is it Prince? <laughs> oh, man. All, All right. right who, who's go. got it right? Who's got All it right. right? Is it? It's pink. All right. Here we go. You know who has it right? Let me find them. Wait. I think Dom. Dom has it. Is it Michael Monroe? Way to go, my friend. It is Michael Monroe. Is that Hanoi Rocks? Well, this is Michael Monroe solo right here. All right, tell us about it. All right, this is, let's go back now to 1993. And this was a run of shows he did every Monday night for like five, six weeks at a place called The Grand, which a lot of you would know because before it that before it was the grand, it was called the Cat Club. And what he did was every Monday night, it was billed as Michael Monroe and Friends. And he would pull up people like Joey Ramone or Little Steven or uh, Sebastian Bach, like um, he, uh, you know, uh, Corey from Warrior Soul. Like every he would he, every well, every he would bring people up like every week, and it was a blast. I remember and he that. Would, you know, and. Uh, the Grand, I mean, the Cat Club and the Grand, that was a great, is a great fun place to see shows. And, yeah. uh, and uh, Michael Monroe can is. Can I interject something? Yes. Is it Gordon Lightfoot? <laughs> he's yeah, listen, the, he, yo, he's in Brian the middle William, of the. Uh, <laughs> yo, you win, Brian, you win with that. That's just, that you win. Winner, and we have a winner. Gordon oh, that's Lightfoot. funny. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Go but ahead. yeah, he, um, he is still, not only is he still going strong to this day, but. In his native, you know, Scandinavia, he's a freaking huge star. Yeah, for and sure. he does yep. he does their equivalent. You know how we have that show, The Voice, over here? Yeah. He's a judge on the Scandinavian version of that. Of course he is. You he's, know, I mean he's, he's Monroe. He's he's a he's a he's a um uh what do you call it? A, a, a an institution over there. He's an institution, yeah. And it's funny yeah. that people said Iggy Pop and Stib Baders, because those were his people. They were all Well, there you go. One thing about Steven that's great is you can always, it's, you know he's going to freeze up. It's just a matter of when he's going to freeze up. So, so there you, know, you go. His, um, can you hear me? Oh, and he's back. I'm back. Go, yeah, the go ahead. Uh, I, Iggy and Stu Bader's were his were his peers, and not only that, they were all friends of his as well. And uh, you know, anyone into them? I mean, if you don't know Hanoi Rocks, or if you don't know Michael Monroe, just uh, 
classic stuff. If you like Johnny Thunders, it's all in that same kind of vein, you know? Absolutely. Hey, you know, um, good one. You know, one thing I want to mention, and I think we're going to talk about a little bit when, when, uh, when our guests come on is, uh, Blackthorn 51 has closed, Yeah, you know, and, uh, me and our guest, one of our guests has a long history with Nikki camp who, uh, who closed it. Nikki camp's a little bit of a controversial figure. You know, he did the pay to play stuff. There's a lot of people who are for it. There's a lot of people for against it, but yeah, Blackthorn 51 closed. And, uh, yeah, upstate Rick, it's another COVID-19 casualty. Yeah. Um, listen, be patient. It'll will, life will return. You know, listen, my attitude is basically like, let, let the Roman empire collapse, you know, and when things pick up, if there is a want and a need for live music, live music venues will, will surface and, and create. Nobody can hang on through this at this point. Nobody. No, nobody. Yeah. You know? You know what? The key is to, this is the time for bands to, to write, to record. Like, like, I think this is like what, like every band should just be brainstorming right now. So when the doors open, they come out, they have just an overflow of, of material that's been like building up, you know? Uh, RS7 and UGHC. Yo, Steve, you got any pictures from Sundance back in the day? Oh, yeah. Oh, Listen, yeah. Listen, bro, there's a fucking bear shit in the woods. Does a snake <laughs> have an ass? Does oh, the Pope, yeah. you know, does the Pope fucking, you know, of course, does this dude have, Jesus. This Actually, dude... you know, it's funny. One of the next things I'm scanning in, because every during the COVID, I've been going into my archives, grabbing various albums and scanning the photos in. And on my coffee table is a photo album of Nuclear Assault at uh, Sundance. Uh, in fact, that picture of Drew, the picture I showed you mm -hmm. of Sick of It All, they were opening for Nuclear Assault. And uh, and that was, I think, 89. And Sick of It All was selling their homemade shirts out of the back of the car. <laughs> you know, and uh, but Sundance is an establishment. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, cool. Classic. So uh, everything all right at home? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good day. It's a good day, you know. I mean, it's uh, you know, barring any kind of uh, you know, zombie apocalypse stuff, but uh, we're good. All right, we'll see you at the end of the show. You know, don't you don't, got don't, it. Don't wander off. I'll be here. All right, there you go, Stephen Messina, the Hardcore Shutterbug. It is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records, and Skateboards, and your core hardcore fan page. Your core hardcore fan page. In the wake of the in the wake of the pandemic, your core Chris created your core fan page, utilizing lessons learned from over 20 years of being an educator and social worker. He decided to reach where hardcore punk and the surrounding genre of bands create not only their music but their message. The interviews are from a psychological perspective to harvest motivation, personal insight, and perspective. Please reach out to them on Facebook or Instagram if you have content to share or if you want to promote your band. Your core fan page. Yo, you got a band out there, even if it sucks. Because most of the shit out there sucks. We all know that. But even if your band sucks, reach out to Chris. Because chances are not everyone's going to think your band sucks. So reach out reach out to Chris and uh, he'll put your shit out there. Maybe your shit doesn't suck. Listen, everything sucks. We all know that. <laughs> it's just the level of suck that it does. Yo, Bob Riley, what's up? Are you in the mix, Bob Riley? What's up, Bob Riley? Speaking of upstate New York, Scalpel, right? <laughs> Who are Scalpel? When, <laughs> where is the band Scalpel where we need them? You know? Scal we are Scalpel. Love that. Love that. Hey, you know what? While we're at it, before we bring our guests on, let's talk about... Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, located in Lakewood, Colorado, is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and metal. Established in 2014, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories, all the way between Chicago and Los Angeles. From the pit to the ditch, they've got your back. Get in touch with them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. And New York Hardcore Comics, opened back in 2013 when lifelong friends Debo to Pro and Lee Fairley combined the collections and obsessions for comic books, punk rock, toys, statues, magic, the gathering, and all things horror. 
The store's located in Lovely, 117 Main Street in Dobbs Ferry, New York. If you want to support them during this pandemic, the never-ending pandemic, it's never going to end. Please contact them via email at newyorkhorrorcorecomics at gmail.com. That said, I uh, want to shout out a couple people. Um, is everybody okay in that chat room there? No, no, no crazy, no craziness today. No, no drama. We the horror, the hor the horror. <laughs> there you go, Dora the Explorer. There you go. Hey, who knows about my Patreon page? Huh? I want to shout out a couple of my latest patrons: Christopher Hoffman, Riz Faroki, John Siciliano, Scott Adler. Thomas Root, Victor Moglienski, Robert Meyerson, and John Bernius represent Long Island. The Patreon page. Don't be a Patreon. Join Patreon. It's our community within a community. I'm posting all kinds of never-before-seen footage and, uh, and photos. We all know I don't like to put my stuff on the internet anymore and have it passed around like a cheap Tijuana hooker. So, that said... Also, you know what? Support this show. Stop lurking. Can't be a lurker your whole life. Help me help you. Stop lurking. You freak. Yes, El Nino rules are coming on in a minute. Um, too complicated. PayPal. Here is the PayPal address, you rocket scientists. Here is the PayPal address for those who cannot wrap their head around the statistical density. There is my PayPal uh, it's stone4124 at PayPal. So contribute to the show, please. I love what I do. You love what I do. It's a love fest. It just doesn't magically happen. I need your support to make this happen. I've been up since 7 o'clock a.m. Work, putting this friggin' show together. Hey, also, do you know that Eugene Robinson is coming on the show? November 25th, one of the big boppers, Eugene Robinson from Oxbow and Whipping Boy, OG. It's an OG right here. And uh, an OG thumper, man. We're going to talk about the riot out in Staten Island at the Paramount Theater uh, at the Dead Kennedy Show. He was in the mix for that and, and all that. So Eugene's a very eloquent guy. Looking forward to having Eugene Robinson on the show. That said, um, I think we're good to go. Make sure there's no, nobody's getting killed. Nobody's getting killed in the, in, the, in the chat room. Everybody seems okay. Let me clear the deck. What the heck? Let's clear the deck. Let's bring our guests on. We are all excited. Here we go. The excitement is infectious. Infectious groove, this excitement. Here we go. Today's guests are the rhythm section in the American heavy metal band Il Nino, which was formed in New Jersey in 1988. They developed their own unique style known as Latin metal and have toured the world extensively. They have released seven albums, two EPs, and one greatest hits album, and have sold over two million albums worldwide. They recently underwent a lineup change, and these are the two members that are forging on with the name. This is their first interview since that lineup change. Please welcome... On drums, Dave Chivare, and on bass, my old friend from Kennedy High School in the Bronx, Mr. Laz Pina. Hey, Dave. Hey, Laz. What's up, my man? How What's are you? Up, How are great you? to be on. Hey, What's thanks up, for coming on, you guys. You bet, Thank man. Thank you. Cool. All right, all right. Hey, let's, uh, hey, Dave, let's start with you. Uh, you, were born, you were born in Lima, Peru, right? And, and you moved to New York at what age? And where'd you settle down? I was, uh, I was nine years old, and... Uh, I came to the U.S. when I was nine and uh, started to move to Hudson County, New Jersey, uh, Union City, to be exact. And uh, that's it. I hung out in the scene, in New York scene, and that's where I met Laz uh, many years later. Yeah. When I was 17, 18 years old. Was there, did you grow up in a musical household? How, like, uh, how did music come into your orbit? <laughs> the funny thing is I didn't. Uh, my mom didn't really want me to do music because, you know, the uncertainty of making money and fucking having a career. But, uh, <laughs> you know how that goes. She was like, nope, fuck you. You ain't fucking playing music. But uh, 
I ended up started playing drums when I was 16. I got a pretty late start, uh, and I listened to a lot of like classic heavy metal bands, kind of like Accept, Judas Priest, you know, uh, Iron Maiden, The Scorpions, and that's that was basically my my startup, you know. And uh, as I got a little bit older, I started getting into some into hardcore like the Mags, you know, and all the, all the great bands that we all know, you know. Yeah. But uh, no, why, I started. Why, I started why, music why on my own. How did did you get into drums? I was a bass player originally, and uh, right. I wasn't very good. I wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of sucked at it. So uh, you know, I was we were at the studio one time, and a friend of mine, this guy Anthony. Uh, he didn't show up to rehearsal for the my original band, which is Gothic became Gothic Slam, was actually called Striker at the time. And uh, we came to rehearsal playing bass, and my guitar player, who's passed away about two years ago, Claude Claudio Gonzalez, uh, he was like, "We have no drummer. The drummer is not here." He's like, "Why don't you play drums?" And I was like, "Dude, I can't fucking play drums. I'm a bass player." And he's like, <laughs> "Play drums." I'd rather play drums with guitar than bass and guitar, no drums. I'm like, all right. So I played drums, and about half hour into it, he's like, dude, you're better than our drummer. It's like, what? <laughs> why don't you play drums instead of bass? And I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'll pick it up. So I started learning to play drums, and then uh, five years later, here you have it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And so, uh, Laz, uh, same thing. I mean, Laz, you and I have known each other a long time. Right. I, you know, I, know, I know your family and your brothers. We go, you and I go way back, man. And yeah. uh, but but all that all that aside, um, tell us a little bit about how music came into your life. Where did you grow up, and 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 all that? I grew up uptown Manhattan, New York City. Um, I guess it was hood still at the time, 146th Street and Broadway. Um, my brother Roland, you know, had this crazy idea to get into metal, and he was a little bit off, a little different than all of us, but. He influenced us to kind of follow his footsteps and get into Ozzy and Maiden. And, uh, and he, he got a guitar and, uh, and we were going to start a band. And Rick and I, my other brother, who's, you know, second to, uh, to roll in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just, it, it influenced and impacted us so heavy that we decided we were going to play before we even had instruments. So Roland got the guitar and we were waiting for our birthdays to get the instruments because we were like it was kind of odd we no there was no rock music or anybody playing live music in our neighborhood people were right. listening to now, the birth and, I, of and I remember and i remember where you i remember where you grew up like yeah. broadway and uh, I, 146 I street 146 i remember street. being up in the apartment with you know with you That's and your right. parents and and I, I remember your sister i remember i remember i remember i remember the whole thing but yeah i mean the, 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 yeah. And what was what was interesting is there was three of you guys yep we all picked an instrument and, you know, we all hung out together. We were best friends. And uh, in high school, we launched our band, you know, and. Uh, and you went, we, you went to JFK High School. I went to JFK High School and performed my first show and bombed at the high school. And then a, a year later to the date, you know, we had a whole year to make up for it. And we just went home and rehearsed and, and kind of really put it together. And then, you know, we became the toast of the high school. Yeah. You know. For sure. And and Dave, uh, our, our 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 resident historian uh, Chucky Brown says Dave got his first record deal at 18 years old with Gothic Slam. Let's talk a little bit about Gothic Slam a second. I have let me, let me dig up a photo. I have a um, couple of things, a couple of cool things that, that you sent. But yeah, t tell us about how Gothic Slam came about, Dave. Um. When I was playing with Stryker, like I said, for about a year's time, um, I was already 17, still in high school, senior year in high school. And I <clears> had <throat> uh, spoke, I was interested in drums through my, my friend, Michael Sabatini, who's the drummer for Attacker. And uh, he brought me to rehearsal and like, I got further into drums because he showed me like how, you know, how cool drums were. He let me play his kit in Hoboken. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, I, I called him up one time. I was like, listen, I saved a couple of bucks. You know, how do I get a fucking record deal? And he's like, look, get by the L. You have any LPs of bands you like? And I said, sure. I have Exodus. I had the Exodus record that was on Torrid Records. Uh, I had a, a couple other records. And he's like, turn the record around. And in the bottom right hand corner, there's an address. <laughs> and send a demo to that address. 
and I put attention A and R department, and I was like, okay, wow. seems pretty seems pretty fucking easy. So I empty out my bank account. I have like six hundred dollars saved. You know, I'm fucking high school, um, and I end up doing an eight track demo with three songs for a uh, Gothic Slam, which was Strikers still at the time. Did the demo. I send it out to three record labels. And two weeks later, I get a phone call from uh, Todd Gordon at Torrid Records. Torrid. And, uh, Torrid Records, and uh, which was, had at that point had had just put out the Bunda by Blood record by uh, by Torrid by uh, Exodus. Right. And um, you know, they called me up and they're like, "We want to sign the band." And I was like, "What?" And they're like, "Want to sign the band?" I'm like, in the back of my head, I'm like, "This can't be fucking real." Like two weeks later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? So I was like, um, so, you know, I'm very blessed. I'm very, I think it was a, I was destined to, to, you know, have good luck in the business. And, and you know, and, um, and you know, I was always a hustler. Even when I was a fucking kid, I was a hustler. The, we, the reason why I had money in a bank account, because I was working after school. I used to work at a meat, at a meat, at a butcher called Las Tres Hermanas in Union City. And I worked the worst fucking job ever, like sweeping blood while the butchers were cutting me. You know, it's like fucking gross. But I did that and I saved money and I was able to pay for the demo and uh, we signed a record deal. I wasn't even graduated high school yet. And then we'd, uh, yeah. That's, incre that's incredible. And, and Chucky also mentions that Gothic Slam had heavy airplay on the college station WSOU 89.5 FM in New Jersey. And, and I absolutely remember that. Gothic Slam yeah. and, and 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 Laz also, you know, you know, we were spending a lot of, you know, this, you know, Laz, we, we all ran in the same crew back then, and yeah. we loved Gothic Slam, right, Laz? That's we right. Liked, we, we loved Gothic Slam, and and the video, uh, Who Died and Made You God, right, ended up uh, getting in a little bit of a rotation on MTV, yeah, right? On Headbangers Ball, that's right. That was yeah. big for all Rick of us. Rick Rackman really, really dug the band for, you know, uh, we saw him on a couple of a couple of nights out, out you know, I think it was Danceteria, if I don't mistake, that I saw him one night at Danceteria hanging out, and we just chatted, and he's like, I fucking love the song, man, you know? Wow. And I'm already in touch with your label, having because at that point, we already had put out Killer Instinct, which was our first record, and then we did our second record, uh, just up facing the crowd, and it was, yeah. that was terrific CBS. So that's yeah. where the band really got the, the thrust that we needed, you know? Besides getting major label distribution, you know, MTV picked us up. Uh, we got to tour with uh, Suicidal Tendencies and Creator and do a bunch of shows. Um, and that was a kind of kind of catapulted the band into uh, in, into doing something in the scene, you know. But again, yeah. I was learning. I came along. I'll tell you a really fucked up story. I'll tell you the funniest shit that nobody knows, right? I get the record deal for Gothic Slam in the mail and... I don't know fucking shit about the music business. I know nothing about the business, right? So I grab this fucking record deal and I walk around Union City in Berkeley <laughs> Avenue looking, looking for a fucking lawyer. And I look up and I see lawyer, Louis, and I remember his fucking name, Louis Alum, A-L-U-M. -A <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, can you read this contract for me? You know, I'm about to sign a contract. And he goes, sure. Little, little did I fucking know he was a real estate lawyer. <laughs> Okay, I wasn't a fucking regular entertainment lawyer, so I'm, I'm walking into a real estate lawyer, and this fucking dude was like, "Sure, uh, fucking a hundred dollars an hour. It'll be about five hours." I was like, "Let's do it. Let's do it." So you know, but then I'm, years later, I'm like, I have I have my fucking contract read by a fucking you know real estate lawyer. What the fuck was I thinking? You know? <laughs> hey, but but you know what, Dave? But 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 Dave, you were thinking. I mean, yeah. more so than. A lot of the other knuckleheads out there, you at least had the sense to go. I'm not signing it until a lawyer sees it yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, Dave. You've always, <laughs> no, no, you've always, Dave. I mean, from Jump Street, you know, as a teenager, you were always an organizer. And you were always a um, a, a catalyst to make things happen. Yeah. You, you, know, yeah. You, you always, you were always a point guy. You were the point guy on you know, Gothic Slam and and in all the other bands. I mean, and, and then we'll get to El Nino, but. I mean, that, that's sort of your nature. You, yeah, you you're know, not trying to sit on your yeah. ass, man. I remember like playing shows with Gothic Slam with Broomhelda as a kid, and Dave would make up his own contracts for the promoters with a writer, you know, and it, uh, making his demands on. You remember paper. that? 
You know, and you would write it out. And I see you come with an envelope. He's fucking and just trying oh, to get fuck the promoter to sign the contract. Right I said, I can't be getting fucked like this, man. So I made up my own contract. Yes. And I and I faxed it out. And I was like, yo, we ain't fucking coming unless you sign the contract. Yeah. You were thinking already. Like, you know, like, Laz, for a fucking, yeah. I remember, Laz, I remember going up to streets in New Rochelle to yes. see Toxic Slam. That was like, that was like your spot, right, Dave? I mean, you guys yeah. ruled streets. Dude, the funny thing is, that's, Laz can tell you the rest of the story, but that's how I met Laz for the first time. Uh, got, uh, Broomhelda was playing with with uh, with Gothic Slam at Streets, and it was fucking packed that night. Uh, and you know, I'll let you know. I'll let the last take over. No, but no, tell him, I, tell him. You tell the story. I, you know, it's. I, I and uh, the story. Well, I so, but as last walks in, and I'm by the stage sitting down, and uh, you know, we just finished, just finished sound check, and he's like, "Hey, man." Are you the, the the leader of the band? And I'm like, I guess, I guess, you know, yeah, what's up? What's going on? And he's like, our fucking vehicle broke down on the way here and we have no gear. Can we borrow your gear? And I was like, you can borrow my drums. He's like, no, no, you don't get it. We need to borrow your guitars, your picks, your fucking <laughs> drumsticks, your cymbals, your drums, your cabinets, your guitar heads. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I'm saying yes, but I got to go ask each individual member. So I went downstairs. The streets had a little fucking yeah. shitty dressing room. Yeah, I, I, remember, every, I remember that shitty dressing room down there. And I remember asking every band member, dude, can this guy use your guitar? And he was like, Billy was like, okay. And then Claude was like, he had this $2,000 Jackson. He was like, man, I don't want nobody playing my guitar. It's like, just let him fucking play it, dude. Don't be a pussy. Just fucking help everybody out. He's like, okay. He goes, and I go, he needs your picks too. <laughs> That's what he, he's like, my fucking picks too. It's like, oh, what the fuck? I was like, Go my ahead, cousin Lass. Gus, my hey, cousin hey, Gus was Lass, supposed to play here. Is that the truth? What was that? Is that the, that's the truth, huh? That's the well. That's the truth on how he remembers it. You know. Yeah. I, I, to me, it was a little bit more romantic. The story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your you know, we had already played together once before. You know, I think no, no, that was the the, the very first time. Uh, you know, when you're a young kid, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. And my cousin Gus, who would normally take us to gigs. Yeah, could not get us, and how we made it to streets was a miracle. And so, you know, we were still counting on it to come on time, and uh, had to go to uh, Gothic Slam. But then we came back to play with Gothic Slam in this club, and the place was sold out. It was like two months later, and yeah, awesome. of course, you know, now we're now we're you know all waiting around to see Gothic Slam shows, you know, for the next couple of years. <laughs> it was good times for sure. It was yeah. really good times. And then that peeled into New York City, you know, the Limelight, Cat Club, yeah. Cafeteria. Well, yeah, I mean, and also, Laz, you, you, I mean, you grew, you, you were friends with, you know, the, all the high, when I was in the High and the Mighty, That's with, right. all the, with the High and the Mighty guys, like the Roadies and, and Tommy Gilmartin and all them on Heath Avenue. Dude. And you, you came down and saw Antidote when we played CBs, right? You're my, the very first time I ever went to CBs was to see, it, it was Antidote, but it, I heard that you were also playing High and the Mighty songs. And so we were excited, you know, because I only had heard of you really through through the underground of these two friends of mine in in, in uh, mechanic class in high school, <laughs> Tom Bill Martin and, and Jesus Padilla, Meek the Meekster, you know, he, yeah. they were graffiti artists and skateboarders too. Yeah. yeah. And that was my first time at CBGBs. Was seeing Antidote, Major Conflict with Ditto. Yeah. And I believe False Prophets. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. It was 1980. Five, I yep. think six, yep. something like that. Yeah. And, and then, listen, and then you know, we struck up a friendship and, and both bands played together many times. Yes. Here's a sh here's a shot of all of us backstage at Antidote <laughs> Limelight. That's right. Right? That's you in front, me on the far right. Oh gosh. There's Gary Cintron, God, God rest his soul wow. in the back. Rest remember, Ga Gary. remember Gary? I love Gary, the in Steel Empire, and his brother Kenny Cintron. Yep, there's your Great brother. Dudes. Your Fucking brother looks like Smash, right? Yeah. <laughs> with the Yankees. I look like Splash. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, awesome. and your brother, your brother Rick next My to you. My brother Rick, yeah. Left. Oh, those yep. were some good days, man. Roaming around New York and it was just nothing but shows and good times. You, you know, know, you know, I kept a um here, let me show you this real quick. And then I, uh this get a load of this. This is what is the date on this? The date on this is 61089. And this is when, you know, we we 
Both bands used to play a lot. There's at Jammin' on 42nd wow. Street. Antidote and Broomhilda. Oh, back yes. when the Deuce, 42nd Street was freaking, you know, yeah. still a little sketch there around that time. But we, we used to play it. We used to play a lot together. We used we spent Laz, you and me and your brother Rick and Roland and yeah. and but we. Well, you had the van. You had the van, so you know you can take us to shows that we could not normally get to, like Lamores, yeah, or anything out in Queens, and you know all of a sudden now we were leaving Manhattan for shows. We spent the we spent a couple of years. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, we spent a couple of years. Here's a shot of uh, of me. This is this isn't this is a couple of years ago, but. Here's a shot of me and, and, and the Pina brothers right here. Oh, wow. Yes. You know? How cool is that? that so, Dave, so, Dave, um, so, Dave, tell us, like, how did the, the Gothic Slam thing wind down? And, and where did you go musically after that? Um, uh, before I get to that, I wanted to ask you a question. You may know this more than anybody. Where was that club that was, like, a block away from Port Authority? That was it. That was jamming. Oh, you're thinking no, about maybe. Are you sure about that one? Zone DK. No, no, Zone DK was no, not Zone DK. Was club. that it? It was a club because Gothic Slam played there too. It actually had yeah. a VHS of yeah, Gothic was, Slam played. Yeah, there. It, I saw Gothic Slam play there. It's a bad thing. Saying, it's, so sketched, it's so sketched out because I remember that you had to have three fucking dudes watch the van while we're unloaded because yep. shit will be fucking gone in two seconds. You yeah, know what I mean? saw an early Pantera show yo, there. I was and you remember that. that, right? Yo, yo, I was going to mention that. Dude, and there was only like five of us there, you know? <laughs> And we were we, going back and forth for the Steel Empire yeah, show yeah, down the street. Yeah, yeah, Dave, it was it was literally on the same block as Port Authority, right? It yes, was like around yes. the corner. I'm yep. at, yeah. on 42nd Street. That Jamming. was it. It was, Sanctuary. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was fucking ghetto gangster in that fucking corner, boy. Shit. Yeah. Yo, and, I remember like my guys would be like, oh, let's unload the bet. I was like, fuck that. You need to fucking have two dudes <laughs> just like fucking stand guard, man, because this yeah. shit will be gone in two seconds. <laughs> and, and, and Laz, you're right. And I, I'll never forget it. It was you and your brothers that were like, we got to check out this band, Pantera. That's that, right. It was the first show they ever played in New York. No, it was it the was, second. It was the second. Was I had it? already seen them at the Cat Club with INC oh. maybe about a year prior. And I was, you know, I couldn't get that guitar player's sound out of my mind. And, I remember I remember yeah. a jam and it was you, me, your two brothers. Gordon and Ansys. Like, Gordon and like Ansys. Two, and two other people yep. watching them play. Yep. 1980. Yes, I don't know, man. That was. It feels like yesterday, and at the same time, it feels like a book, Dude, like a storybook from a long time ago. Club. Zone DK, the Cat Club, Dance yeah. Interior, Light. Yeah. Light. Those were the fucking days where there were so many amazing clubs in New York the City. Marquee, the Marquee, the Marquee also was hosting Marquee, shows. Marquee, not include, of course, you know, CBs, the Pyramid, and, and, List, and you know what? I was. I have. I sort of have a journal from those days, or I have like a calendar of all the dates. And recently I looked at it and it was mind boggling. We were playing constantly, like sometimes yeah. two or three times a week. We played yep. the limelight, the cat, like back then, like the band, China club as right? well. Back then, yeah. right, Dave? Like, you, you know, played, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if we had fucking five people or 12 people. It didn't no. fucking matter. Yep. It was just the fucking, the coolness of just playing and it was like a gathering. It's like, you know, your fucking 10, 12 friends are going to be there no matter what. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that matters. Man. Those motherfuckers are going to show up. And then right. you were going to get together afterwards and hang out till fucking five in the morning. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I look at some of the things. I'm like, holy shit. Could that be that we played on a Sunday, a yep. Tuesday, and a Friday? Yeah. Like, and then, you know, we couldn't play together in the same time. Oh, the black the cat. Yo, Harry. Yo, yo, ha Harry, Harry Slash. Harry Slash, what's hey, up, brother? The space at Chase. Space at yes. Chase. Oh, <laughs> man. man. What's up, Harry? That, whoa, hold on. Big shout out to Harry Slash. Hold oh, on. Yeah. Oh, I got to find that. Space at Chase. Wow, that's, that's great. That's badass. Okay, yeah. here you go. Harry Slash. Yo, boom, coming at you, man. Here you go. This one goes out to our friend... From ha from the space here you go, yo Broomhilda the Drew Stone Hit Squad, wow. Fire America the Make a Wish Foundation. This has got to be 1991. There you go, acoustic That's Christmas awesome. night benefit. Oh, I remember that. I think we played. Uh, we, we did one of those where we played laying down. Do you remember? Do you remember? Who, do you remember who sang for Spitfire America? Uh, was it this chick, Jezzo? Yeah, it was Jezzo. Yes, 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 it, I remember. It, it, it was Jezzo. So anyway, okay. 
Enough, enough, enough walking down memory lane in New York City clubs. Those Dave, are great. Dave, tell us about how Gothic Slam ended and musically where you went from there. Um, you know, it's, it's typical, you know, record label bullshit. And, you know, uh, things got a little heated after we put out the, the, the Just a Face in the Crowds album on, on, on Sony. Whatever, Sony now. But back then it was epic. Um, you know, we started getting pressure to start doing another record, not even four months after the album came out. And uh, they were just trying to churn us out and throw it against the wall and see what stuck. And, you know, we internally in the band, we were just we weren't seeing eye to eye. A lot of people will party a little too hard. Um, I never, I've never partied personally. I, I don't, I've never done drugs. I don't do, I don't drink. You know, I live that kind of lifestyle since I was a kid. Uh, never have. Um, but at that point, I started seeing like the band wasn't really gelling, and we weren't seeing eye to eye anymore. So we, uh, we started getting pressure from the label to do another album. You know, and we just weren't down with it, and. Uh, we just said, fuck the label. We told them, fuck you. We're not going to yeah. fucking, we're going to keep touring. And we kept touring. We just said, fuck you. We're not going to do another record. They were like, we're going to drop you if you guys don't do another album. So go fucking drop us. Go fuck yourself, you know? And we went out and toured anyway. We were touring for another six months. And then uh, that took its toll. And then uh, I went out and played. It, I've had a real weird situation like you where I always end up playing drums for the bands that I open up for, you know? That's something that's been a, a fucking ever going situation so we're opening up for lost rocket and uh we was assigned to capital at the time a san francisco band and yeah. very similar to bay area thrash you know testament type of shit. and uh i remember i get a call and said hey you know we want you to we just op to open up, op open up for lost rocket and about three weeks later i get a call that says hey do you guys do you want to come out here and play drums for lost rocket and i was like for what like well we just fired our drummer we want you to be a new drummer so i was like Fuck yeah i would love to so I got on a, remember that airline Tower Air? Oh, of course, of course. So I jumped on a fucking, and I'm, I don't know if you know this, but I fucking hate flying. And I've been afraid of flying my entire fucking life. I chose the wrong career, dude, because I fucking hate <laughs> flying. So, you know, I'm the type of dude that's always reading up on fucking, so I read about Tower Air the night before. I was like, fuck, this company has like 30 year old planes that they fucking buy from other people and they paint them. And it's like I got bought to get into the tower <laughs> airport to San Francisco, and I was fuck, I didn't sleep all night thinking, man, I'm gonna go down with this plane. This is a 30 year old plane. It's older than me. I'm gonna, I'm fucking dead, you know. So I get on the fucking plane, get to San Francisco, play with Lost Rocket. We did a lot of European and uh, Japanese touring. Uh, I did America a couple of times with them. Was in the band for a two and a half, three years. Left Lost Rocket, and we Lost Rocket opened up for mod for method of destruction so ended up uh opening up for mod me and billy hit it off we became friends and then uh not too long after we met up one time and um he asked me to play drums for for mod so i did and i played for mod for about four four and a half years four years i did uh actually four albums with mod and uh then after that mod did a co-headline tour with propane that's that's and, a la uh, that's Laz Rocket, right? That's Laz Rocket. That's in 1992 in Japan. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Like, you like the fucking you like you like the feathered hair look? That's it's happening, bro. <laughs> Lovely, man. Lovely. It's, it's happening. I, oh I my like God. I like Those the mustache, the mustache the tattoo. You you got it all lined up, man. That was the only thing he didn't oh. shave was the mustache. He still had his baby mustache. Yeah. And still to this day, he hasn't shaved the mustache. <laughs> you know, fuck that. Do you, see, you, see, you see, you know, if you say you, if I shave the mustache, the fucking fat head comes out even more. So <laughs> can't be doing that. I gotta have something to fucking you know, kind of off throw off the fucking balance when you look at me. You know what I mean? So uh, we uh ended up as like I said, opening up for doing a co headline tour with, with Pearl Payne called the Pain and Destruction Tour. Method of destruction and propane, and um, about a month later, two months later, uh, Billy uh, was Billy and I were not working together anymore, so we stopped playing together, and uh, everything was cool, you know, because uh, I came back about a year later, and I ended up doing a, a one last record with Billy, but I get a call from uh, from propane guys saying that they're looking for a drug, so go to Long Island, jam with them, and then I I joined the band and uh, I did another three three years with them 
And then, uh, yeah, and the, during those times, it was funny. During those three years that I, I, one of those years I lived in Long Island, I used to get in trouble with propane all the time because I was late. You know, propane was run like a fucking, like a factory, like a business, you know? Yeah. We, yeah. I'd, live with, I'd live with the two guitar players and we would basically get up at fucking 11 in the morning and we'd jam from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock, Monday to Friday, like a fucking job, you know? And we would print all our own shirts. We had our own setup plant in the fucking in the garage. It would print all our shirts. And we'd print shirts for like two hours before each fucking session and blah, blah, blah. But we, you know, Gary Meskel, a lot of respect for that dude. He, uh, he ran a tight ship. I learned a lot from him by watching his organization and how he, he handled a band. He handled a band like a business, not like a fucking hobby, you know? And, um... Uh, Long story short, I used to go see Laz all the time. I used to spend the weekends at his house in Hoboken, and yeah. I crashed at his house, and I was always fucking late. I'd get on the LIE to go back to Long Island to go to rehearsal, and I'd fucking never get up in time, and I'd be stuck in traffic for two hours, and so I'd get yelled at. Every time I got back to Long Island, I'd be like, dude, where the fuck were you? It's 1 o'clock. I'm like, sorry, sorry, man. So I kept fucking up. So, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I remember, after I, got I, used, up there. I remember back in those huh? days, you, you, Dave used to love to be on the phone. <laughs> and, and 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 at the time he was also but propane was also booking their own tours so yeah. dave was kind yeah. of acting as the agent as well and so whenever he yeah. come over to my house you know i'd always like think oh my god he's gonna call europe and it wasn't like having a cell phone like today it was very expensive <laughs> and they would come <laughs> in to make to book tours on my phone and and I, I remember saying to myself, oh, shit, I hope I can make my bill this month. <laughs> but like, Dave and I became really close. You because we $33 from last month, bro. You had like a bunch of close to the UK and Germany. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you and I really kind of became close because we didn't party. You know, we were, yeah. we were really just interested in checking out shows, having a nice time. And, you were interested and, you know, in growth, bro. Stop fucking around. You don't have to fake it. <laughs> Girls and food. I mean, I think we love to eat too. You know? <laughs> oh, you, oh, you Latin guys with the food and the girls. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny, a funny story, right? We go to the fucking limelight. We go to the limelight. I was just, just <laughs> got the You too. We go to the limelight, and I come in, and you know, I'm trying to give out like flyers for one of the shows we're doing, and Rick Pina. Glass's brother comes up to me. He goes, man, that's not the way you give out flyers. He goes, this is the way you give out flyers. I took the flyers <laughs> from my hand. He started going and started schmoozing every girl in the fucking limelight. Like, everyone, one after the other. He's like, oh, check, come check out my boy's band. And, you know, what's your number? Like, this fucking dude. He was. You know? He's a motherfucker, man. He's like, that's the way you give out flyers, man. You pick up fucking yeah. girls. That's you give out flyers. I was like, wow. Rick, right. Rick, Rick, Rick was... Rick was Friggin' fearless, you know. Is that a thing anymore? Do people even get flyers? Not really. Nah, not really. No. I mean, it's, it's all just so, you know. No, face, it's a post. Face, it's face a tag, huh? and, and no, you, you create an event page or, yeah. or you know, or, 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 or whatever, whatever. You know, just just a quick a quick plug while, while we're here, so get it out of the way, is that, you know, uh, for everybody out there, we're talking about Gary Meskel and propane. Uh, Sunday, December 13th, uh, coming on the show is uh, Gary Meskel from Propane and the Crumb Suckers. Right and, and, I'll, be, and, I'll be tuning in. I want to say hi to my boy. Yeah, I well, still talk and, to him to this day. We, we yeah, he's on. a good, good dude. And we will talk to him about running it like a military operation. He don't fuck around, man. And you know what? I learned a lot from him. I really did. Well, he has a, he, he, he has a great work ethic, man. You know, and I think you know, I think that's part of the reason why the crumb sucker shit just, you know, they keep trying to maybe do a reunion or whatever, but Gary's a real focused, you know, business dude and kind of those, you know, those other guys. Dude, this sort of like, for 40 fucking years. Yeah. But you and, know, you know they, they're very successful. They go to Europe and crush it. They, they're a yep. very successful man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm. You don't have yeah. to tie shit. Though. You don't to around. this day, we, we sometimes would run into them out there and catch out and catch a set. Yeah. yeah, it's always great running into those cats. All right, so hey, let me um let me shout out some sponsors. Let's take a break and we'll come back and 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 let's talk about El Nino a little bit, huh? All righty. Right. How long do you have? Five five minutes. Okay, beautiful. Go ahead, go to the bathroom, grab grab a, grab a whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. It is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill. 
the Texas Silver Rush Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and your core hardcore fan page. Also shouting out our people at Pitchfork and, of course, Zum and all at Fryette. The Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in the East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue. They are featured in New York Magazine, the New York Times, and Veg News. Hey, man, have you read the latest issue of Veg News? Their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu could be made gluten-free for all you gluten-free motherfuckers. This year, they're celebrating their 20th anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing, clean food. After three months of being closed, they're now open for deliveries. Get in touch with them and order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Also, want to shout out another, it is Shout Out Sunday. Anybody got anybody to shout out in there? Where is Bear Bro? I don't know. I'm vegging. I'm lamping. I'm stone cold lamping. I'm vegging. Hey, Mosh. Hope you're holding it down in Germany, bro. Yeah, propane kills it in Germany for sure. Speaking of killing it and bringing in the big boys, on Sunday, December 6th, it is the one, the only, Mike Judge of Youth of Today, Death Before Dishonor, and Judge breaking out the big guns. Mike Judge coming on the show. Kind of stoked on that. Uh, also, after that, show number 84. Oh, you know what? I got to announce this show. I got to do it. I got to. I got to. Um, coming up. Here you go. Brand new show. You hear it here first. Brand new show, Wednesday, December 9th. We all like girls. I mean, I know I do. Here we go. We are honored to have Nancy Burrill coming on the show. She has a new book out, I'm Not Holding Your Coat. Nancy Burrill is an, is an OG Philly hardcore gal, uh, was around in the, in, in the early Philly hardcore days, uh, pr promoted shows, and uh, was a part of all that early Philly stuff. Of course, you know she eventually moved up to Boston. Uh, she married Al Burrill from SSD Control, but... Um, I've been reading the book. There's lots of great stuff in it. Uh, great recollections. Great uh, American hardcore folklore. So Nancy Burrill coming up on Wednesday, December 9th. New show. Lots of cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff coming up. So, oh yeah, especially, I got to mention this before we keep it moving here. Um, on Sunday, November 29th, Moby's coming on the show. What's up? Animal rights activist, vegan. Old school hardcore kid. So lots to talk about with Moby. Big fan of the show. And we are stoked about that. You know, you know, you know, you know. Hey, you know. You know. Um, I want to mention. I want to mention that. Uh, where did I get this from? Oh, the other day. Let me put these banners up real quick. The other day. Hey, 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 it was the other day, okay? What do you say? Um, I got like this weird PayPal, um, uh, uh, you know, you've got, you know, money, whatever. I'm like, it was like an odd number. It's like, who the hell sent me, you know, and it was a decent number. And I was like, wow, who's this? I want to read you, I want to read you the letter that came along with this PayPal um, support of the show. He says, Hi there. I've been watching almost every show you've done, and I'm very entertained by it. Being 47 years old and living in Stuttgart, Germany, I never quit making and loving music, and I love collecting vinyl. Having spent so many hours with you and your friends really feels strange, since even though we've never met at all, it feels like I know you and seem to like all of you. It feels like I'd love to get, I'd love I'd love to get to do your New York film and music tour one day since that was my first profession. Much love and respect for all the good documentaries and stuff you have done. Kudos from Germany, Martin. Listen, that is heartwarming. And thank you so much, Martin, for supporting the show. And thank you. Thank you, everybody, for creating this community. I see 
There's a, there's a lot of new faces in the chat room today. I want to welcome you all. This is our worldwide uh, community here, and we meet here every Wednesday and every Sunday. And kind of, you know, on the side, I do a show. But, uh, yeah, so I see there's – yeah, it is all love, Lori Dawn. It, it's really great. And, and listen, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Hey, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you, even if it was like, yo, that show was great or that show sucked or you suck or whatever. You know, um, I, I love to hear from everybody, whether it's a text or, you know, a comment on the YouTube page. By the way, if you're watching a rerun on YouTube, there's a button right there. Please subscribe to the Stone Films NYC YouTube page. But um, yeah, thanks. It, it is a great show. And I'm really um, honored and gracious. Um, I didn't plan the show. It just happened when the COVID thing hit. And now it's a really a big part of my life and it, it's what I do. And it brings me a lot of joy and a lot of other people a lot of joy. So absolutely. We, we are all family. Uh, you know, Not to sound corny. And that goes around a lot. Like, yo, yo, family, yo, fam, and all that. Like, kind of corny sometimes. But, you know, this is, this is the way, you know, this is kind of the way it goes. We, we are family. We are family. <laughs> so there you go. You know, th thank you all. And um, so, yeah, there's the uh, – listen, if you want to jump on board and support the show, please, we could use it. Uh, there's the Patreon page. There's a $2 tier, a $5 tier, a $10 tier. We're going out and doing the Drew Stone Cinematic and Music Walking Tour in New York City again. There's a, a – at the, at the $20 tier, is it? $25 tier? There, there's uh, – we, uh, we do the New York Hardcore Chronicles 10 Questions starring you, directed by – Award-winning filmmaker, Drew Stone. So, yeah. Um, so there you go. Uh, yes, it's a – thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Anyway, not, not to go on and on. Just want to make sure – what's that? It sounded like – oh, it sounded like Rick to life there, yo. Yo, man, it's like, it's like family, and it's like fam. And listen, I, I don't I – don't, we don't – I don't bring up Rick to life on the show. Rick to life suffers from mental illness. And like, that's sad. Rick to life was a, a friend of mine back in the day. And personally, when somebody's suffering from mental illness, I avoid speaking, speaking, you know, against them and saying nasty shit about them. That kid is sick and he needs help. It's not my style to, to rank on. That's like being a, 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 a schoolyard Billy, a bully. Kirk Frank, thank you for bringing Laz and Dave on from El Nino. I'm so happy that they're here. Still making music, Latin metal. You know what? We got to bring them back on. Yo, Laz. Yo, Dave. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Happy what up, to what be up? back, man. So, so yeah. Sorry, sorry, man. I had to go through the whole. I had to go through, run the whole gamut so we could. So we. Oh, could good. Really that yeah. was really nice from that cat in Stuttgart, Germany. You know. Yo, I, get I, the, I get this stuff all the time. Now. Yeah. It's really nice, man. Well, you've been doing a lot of kind things, including for myself. You know, you gave me a job when I needed it when I was a kid working on music videos that led me to, to a career and promotion, got me closer to the industry and my desires for, you know, recording, you know. So I want to thank you for all the wonderful that. things that you did for not just myself, but a lot of our friends that had no idea what we were doing. And you put us down and say, come on in and learn. And, and it gave us work and something to do. And some of us kept going. Well, you know, you, you worked on all, you worked mm -hmm. on some of the greats. Uh, I did. You know, there's, there's, wait, hold on. Uh, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. There's, uh, you know, Run DMC, Typo Negative. These are yeah. all videos that you worked on with That's me. That's right. Uh, Onyx Slam. You worked on all the Biohazard videos. But yep. listen, you know, you know, leading this into Supercat. We did Supercat oh, we did as well. Supercat yeah. with Biggie and Puffy. Remember That's that? That's right. With Biggie Smalls and P Diddy. And I remember, I remember, yeah. <laughs> I remember somebody said, "Yo, that guy." It was the first time Biggie Smalls was ever. In a video, somebody said, yo, that guy, he's got skills. He's going to be a star. I'm like, really? I don't yeah. see it. Whatever. Oh, he was dope, man. Yeah, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I just. So let's talk a bit about how um, El Nino came together, Dave. Like, you know, my, 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 my kind of take on it was always like, for you, was like, after you kind of been sort of, I, I hate to use the word, side man and all these other bands, El Nino, you decided to do your own thing. And sort of, and, and, and you learned enough, and it was time for you to kind of take the helm and run the ship. Tell us about it a little bit. I mean, 
my first real thing where I actually led the band was actually Gothic Slam. But then, like you, you're right, I played drum. I was a drummer, and I worked for many, many bands up to that. Um, with El Nino, I mean, it was where I mean, I learned a lot from every, I, I I learned a lot from every band that I played with. You know, uh, even Soulfly. You know, I I went out and played for Soul after Propane. Um, we were already starting uh, an El Nino process, but it was called El Nino, with uh, which had original guitar player uh, Danny Gomez, which is my singer in Gothic Slam. Right, uh, and Jorge, actually, right? Yeah, and Jorge Rosado from Marauder. And they were the original two cats in El Nino. Um, and, uh, you know, I had that going for a little bit. It was a little more hardcore, but it had a Latin tinge to it. I was already kind of introducing the whole ethnic vibe to the band, which I'd never seen a hardcore band do, do like, you know, Latin tinged hardcore that never had never happened up to that point yeah and uh after that i, I had to kind of relax on on the, on the lino thing because i got an, uh, an opportunity to go out with soulfly at that ah. time soulfly was crushing it and yeah. uh i went and tried out for them and you know then i went on tour with them i went out and headlined with them uh with hey breed and a couple of other bands then after that uh we went out to do uh a, one of the biggest tours of my life was actually we opened up for Iron Maiden. That's when Bruce Dickinson came back to the band, and it was a uh, Iron Maiden, Soulfly, and Puya Latin metal band. Puya was opening on that tour, and uh, that was a great fucking tour. We, you know, great times. Learned a lot. Got to meet one of my idols. You know, uh, drummer from Iron Maiden. You know, it, it, it was it was a uh, pretty surreal moment in my life. But uh, when I came back from doing this. Um, I had learned a lot about just being in Soulfly for a little bit. It was short tinged, you know, a couple of months. And then I also played on a Black Sabbath tribute song. Oh, um, really? Under the Sun. Yeah, I played on the song with 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 Soulfly. Oh wow! And I didn't uh, know that. yeah, it was it was a great time. Like I said, those short three four months were actually amazing. You know, I learned so much about. Well, they, they uh, were they were do, they, they, him Max and Gloria were doing it big back then. Fuck you! They were crushing. They still are. Yeah. Gloria, yeah. Gloria and I are very good friends, you know, we're, yeah. we're in, in, in a good place with them. And uh, I remember that when I came back from this, I had sat down with Lass. I even said to him, he had a studio in Hoboken. And at that point, me and Lass used to work with, you let me use your studio and I'll produce whatever you want me to produce for free. <laughs> right? <laughs> and we're hanging out together every fucking day. We'd hang out every day. I told Mr. Bruce held a CD prior to me having the studio as well. Yeah. I produced their, the Broomhelda EP, which is fucking awesome. It's still one of my favorite releases, you know. Um, it's fucking, the, it's great. And uh, I remember we hung out so much. I used to come watch him, re but from Helda rehearse. Even when I get out of work, I just come and hang out. We just fucking chill all day, you know. And then we'd up at the fucking coach house diner, and we, oh, they probably oh, 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 the, the the coach the coach house, aka the Roach House. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember it well out there. Out there, Dude, what, what, that was on we, seventeen. We should have fucking paid. We should have paid fucking rent there. Okay, it was fucking. <laughs> yeah, yo, they had nice. Yo, I remember the coach house. Like they had nice booths there. You could oh, hang yeah. in that back room, man. It was comfortable. Yeah. Dude, so we used to be like me and all his brothers, and we used to bring you know a lot of times depending who, who was there with us, but they come kick it with us. We'd come there and we'd order like one or two appetizers and have like 80 cups of coffee and hang out there for like three fucking hours every day. So <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the fucking owner was probably like, get rid of these fucking dudes. They're dropping like $20 and they're fucking taking up a booth for fucking five hours, you know? So, but uh, but did, so when you I, were, when you when you were doing those demos though, and you know, I, I remember trying to talk you out of doing them and go and stick in with SoFly. Cause you know, you were, you were always, I seen every single band that you were in since Gothic Slam. And so, you know, I knew the struggle and I knew, you know, all the hard work that required to go on, to go out there and work and stay, but you were determined, you know, and since we were friends, yeah, you know, he I, would come at late at nighttime and do, and, and do the recordings at my studio. Yeah. And I just I, started, I, I just started the so studio. We started doing the El Nino thing and, uh, we trend, you know, went to do the Il Nino thing, and I wanted to do something that it kept it heavy as fuck, that it had a lot of Latin elements, but it had a little bit of singing, you know? So we started introducing singing into what we were doing. And uh, 
like I said, the whole tribal thing, I learned a lot from SoFi. You know, it was like his vibe and the way that they tuned down and everything. I, it, yeah. was just, it was definitely influenced El Nino, the birth yeah. of El Nino. And, uh, you know, credit's what credit's do. Motherfuckers love to not fucking credit people. And I don't give a fuck. I'll credit the fucking dude in the corner that made my sandwich. I don't give two fucks. You know what I mean? And uh, I remember that. Because you got to have a good sandwich, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you a story about that later on. You fucking laugh your ass off. But uh, but you know, it was cool. You know, we we came back home and I started to go to the studio because I had to I had a job. I was working at fucking SIR and uh, I, I was no longer playing with with Soulfly. And the minute I got home, I went back to work. I had a CDL and I was you know wow. thank God I had a CDL. I had a, I had a to CDL, have a CDL man. because we CDL is hard to get, man. You well, the, the problem is this, CDL? right? I couldn't keep a fucking job because I kept leaving to go on tour. Every band that I was in, my bosses would get pissed off and be like, fuck you, get the fuck out, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're like, you work three months and you got to leave for a month. So I started brainstorming. I'm like, I need to have a CDL so so then I could always have a fucking job. Because if you if you live in the East Coast and you have a CDL, you'll always have a fucking job every time. Yeah. I, You're yeah. driving for UPS, for Federal Express, for fucking Budweiser. Don't matter. You always have a job. Drive for Gabe. Remember Gabe? Yeah. <laughs> Gabe at 3Gs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So go on. I, uh, I started to, uh, and I'll tell you the funny thing about driving. I had basically, I drive in a 40-foot truck, and I deliver fucking Il Nino demos, and I had meetings while I was on, on the clock. You know what I mean? I remember fucking just because when you have a uh, commercial vehicle, you can park anywhere you want. In New York City, you have no fucking parking anywhere. So with the biggest balls, I fucking park my car on Fifth Avenue and then go deliver a fucking El Nino demo, you know, to a record label to try to get a deal. And nobody can fuck with me because I'm in a truck, you know, <laughs> unless my boss be calling me 80 times on the radio. So where the fuck you been for the last hour and a half, dude? Oh, just yeah. stuck in traffic, dude. Stuck in traffic, you know? So... Uh, so, so so there's a couple shuffling. There's a bit of shuffling around. Jorge Jorge leaves uh, the band. Dan is a little yeah. shuffling around. Um, the the bass player steps in and becomes the singer. And uh -huh. you and, and then Laz, you step in to play bass. Yeah. And and uh, Il Nino lands on Roadrunner Records, right? Yes, I remember going. Uh, we I Mike Gitter has been a, a very good friend of ours, and he's Gitter the again. Sign. I have it in my notes. You know, he signed he fucking a lot of uh, great bands. You know, he signed Kill Switch Engage. He signed Megadeth. Yeah. You know, Blastro. Yeah. Blastro is a great fucking yeah. AR guy. So, long story short, again, everything that I've done in the business has helped me. I had met him when I was out with Soulfly. Not for long, but just very, you know, for a quick, for a, quick, uh, a moment. So, uh -huh. I basically drove, I called him up and I said, hey, you know, this is Dave, you used to be in Soulfly, I'm in a band called El Nino now, and I want you to hear my demo. And he's like, send it to me. And I'm like, no, I don't want to send it to you. I want you to hear it in person with me, sit in there. Because I, I know the deal, I know the drill. At this point, I'm like, listen, you send somebody, a, 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 you know, they could be not paying attention, or then you know how much you can negotiate if how much they like your fucking band, right? So I want to see that shit live. Right, so I tell him I'll come deliver it in person and let's sit down and listen to it. He said, "Cool, let's do it." I come to the Roadrunner offices when they were in a, a different building. Show up, I go sit down with my Gitter. I play him the El Nino demo. Uh, we had a four song demo at that point, and he was tapping his pencil. Man, he was fucking into it, you know. And my whole pitch was like, listen, it's a heavy band. It's an ethnic band, but there's singing involved. So we could actually have some kind of commercial success. And uh, he was down with it. So he uh, came to see us play live. We played at the Birch Hill. Oh. He played at the Birch Hill. It was a packed fucking show. At that point, uh, WSAU had really been crushing it for us. We're very thankful to them, um, you know, to the Kaiser sisters, to, to Jackie and Jen Kaiser. And they really hooked it hooked it up in uh um, yeah, it was actually the snowcore show. The sick yeah, that was the second show. And then we played the snowcore show. Uh, What's the snow court? What's the snow court? Snow core, snow core. It was a it show was that they did by Action Park, near Action Park, and they did a yeah. show. It was Kitty, 
It was Kitty, Biohazard. Sick of um, it all. No, sick, sick of it, of it all. all. It was a great fucking it. show. Were you in the so, you were in the band already, lads? I was. Uh, yes, I was in the band. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, so, at that time, I had just started the studio, and I, I, my mind was really, I thought I was going into this whole new career, you know, uh, through Billy Milano, you know, he sent me, and I did, like, the early uh, demos for the, uh, for um, Agnostic Front, Riot, Riot, Upstart, yeah, I remember, which brought yeah. me the Mad Ball, uh, Hold It Down uh, demos yep. as well. So I'm thinking, I'm getting ready to enter into this whole production and engineering until you know the the El Nino thing just happened unexpectedly after the third show. You yeah. know, every, every, it changed everyone's I, 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 lives. I, I, you know, everyone started quitting their jobs, and it was just crazy. Yeah, I tell you the funny thing with with the whole transition into El Nino. So we played the Snowcore show, and we uh, he comes up to me as soon as we finish playing. My guitar comes to my right, and he goes, "Your fucking band is signed. You, it's, nice. it's a done deal." Yeah, and I was like. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we like fucking nailed it. But prior to this, I'll tell you where I was fucked, right? I didn't have a fucking band. At that point, when I left this office, El Nino was only three people, you know? It was the guitar player, uh, my singer, and me, and that's it. That We had no band. So Which at the he, time was Rizzo. Inter- yeah, Rizzo with Mark, Mark Rizzo, Rizzo on guitar. Yeah. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I get a, you know, he said he got a phone call, like a, two days later, he says, we want to see the band live before we sign the band. Then I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't have a fucking band. So I approach Roger Vasquez, who at that time I was producing his demo at Lass's studio. And he was a percussionist. So I, I traded with him. Also with Bay of Pigs. You remember Bay of Pigs? And, uh, and uh, what's the other band? We know those guys, Artie. They, Artie and his brother Joey, they played with uh, both oh, worlds. No, no, yeah, reconstruction, yeah, no. reconstruction, Re- reconstruction. That's right. He also played with reconstruction. Yeah, that was so the that's last room so that's Roger Bassett, the original yeah. percussionist. So that's what he, so I, I I come up to him and I'm like, listen, he's a singer of that band, and I said, dude, play percussion for me, and I'll produce your demo for free. And he was like, okay, let's fucking do it. And he, I was like, give me thirty days. If we don't have a record deal in thirty days. You can fucking bounce the fuck out. Um, and he said, okay. So and now I had a percussionist. So then of course I approached last and uh, we you know we have been talk- we've kind of been talking or toying in the idea of uh, playing together. It would be fun and you know, and so last At I first, was like I thought it was just gonna be a few shows and I thought it was cool, you know. <laughs> it was like and I was I was already kind of beyond like heavy music. I was on to all the things with my brothers at that time with a band that we had called Shanghai Five, which was a little yeah. bit more dirty or Santana. But it was like metal and Latino and Latin rhythms. You know, it was it was seemed like a fun thing to do. I yeah. never imagined it was going to be something that was going to change my life for the next twenty years. Thanks, so like crazy. We, uh, we like that sometimes. Yeah. So it was fucking. It was great that I was playing with my best friend. You know what I mean? That's yeah. to me it was the coolest part of it. But uh, all of a sudden, we. Uh, and now I need a guitar player. I need a, a, a rhythm guitar player. So we start looking for guitar players in the area, and we find Joel Del Paisante, who's the rhythm, the original rhythm guitar player in El Nino, and he was playing a club in Newark, and I forgot the name of the club. Um, Pipeline? Pipeline, yes. Good one. And uh, he was fucking... Why I get the big bucks. <laughs> Point for Hope. Actually, the drummer in Point for Hope became our percussionist on the confession record. Who's Would this? Jard- Jard- Daniel Cotto. Daniel Cotto is like... Yeah, this was Jardel's band. Right. Huh? No, because just to clear it up, uh, Jardel had a band called Point for Hope. Right. And yeah. he was recruited. I went to the recruitment for this, too, which was funny, yeah. in, in this and, club in Newark. And he, was, he was like and, the fucking... And, and they were, he, he was, was opening like up for the band. Band. at the time, actually. It was a show him opening up for the Cro-Mags, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to go. And it was just Harley fighting against Cro-Mags, which was fantastic. And 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 yeah. Danny Cotto, who was the drummer, who later on, well, you can finish yeah. up the story, Dave. So this fucking band gets on stage, and they were a great band, you know? But the guitar player, to me, the rhythm guitar player just stood out. He, he was moving around like he was a fucking front man. Yeah. I was like, this kid's on fucking fire, you know? We're so, feeling this kid. Yeah. So we uh, we approach him afterwards, and he you know he's like he was hesitant to like oh you know I don't want to leave my band, and I said listen you don't have to leave your fucking band, same shit same bit yep. give me thirty days man if I don't fucking if I don't put something in front of you worth your time, 
you could bounce the fuck out. He had a yeah, great so, look, Jardel. Uh, he was a great guitar player. He had a, a Mataleon bio has a tattoo on his leg, and on his on his other side, he had the sick of it all dragon. So you know, he had already some cool uh, attachments. You know, especially for me, New York guy all the way from Brazil. So now we have, doesn't speak now we English have, too well. So now, now that I have a band, I have a six piece band. I have twenty five days to promote a show at the fucking Birch Hill, which is the first show that that we've seen at. And I'm like, man. So of course I called on you know WSOU's help and we're like, listen, we'll, can we do an interview? Can we fucking do any anything we need to do? We need to blow the show up. So we're luck very lucky and fortunate. There was about four hundred people at the show for an unsigned band at the Birch Hill, and wow. uh, and that and after we did that show, ten days later we did the fucking Snowcore show, and two weeks later we were signing up. We were at the fucking Roadrunner office signing a new record deal. Yeah. It happened fast. It happened fast. And then, and then, it happened fucking quick as shit. And then, Revolution, uh, Revolution, um, on Roadrunner, uh, that was a, a right out of the box. Who who produced that? Ron Saint Germain originally oh, produced Ron the record. Yeah. Myself, yeah. Ron Saint Germain, who did Bad Brains, um, Eye Against Eye. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He did. I, he did, 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 did you record? He, did, I'm sorry. Did you record that up at his place? Upstate? We did it in Dover. No. Oh, Dover, New Jersey. We did it Dover, New Jersey. We did it. That's, that's, that used to. What was the name of that a showcase? Did you ever go there to see shows? I, I, wait, wait. He he has a recording studio at the Showcase Theater. He it, no, no. The showcase Club. Yes, he used to. Well, he used to work out of there because he lived near there. What? Yes. The show place. The show place. The show place. Oh, here. Wait, wait, wait. I got yeah. one for you. Wait, hold okay. on. So that was the place with 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 the go go bar, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. Get a little, so check this out. So we, we hold are, on. We're out, hold on. We're out hold scouting on. studios, right? We're out hold scouting studios. Hold on one studios. second, Dave. Hold on one second, Dave. Hold Dave, on. Hold on. Hold on. I had to dig this up. 1984 at the show place in Dover. Yes. At that's Six that's... Front and the High and the Mighty wow. at the show place in awesome. Dover. This was this was the last one of the last shows I well played singing for the high and mighty before i joined antidote this was 1984 the show place in dover new jersey yep that's there crazy great isn't that crazy anyway huh? so go on dave i'm sorry so yeah long story short we're out scouting studios and we go to a studio in new york city we went to another studio in, in uh i forgot where else we went i think maybe connecticut i don't remember exactly and then we ended up at the studio in jersey and the first thing we all look at each other, we're like, we walk in and we, the, uh, the owner is like, oh yeah, this fucking door right here leads to the go-go bar. I own the go-go bar, so you guys can go to the go-go anytime. I turn around to the getter and I was like, we're doing our record here. We're definitely yeah. <laughs> out of there. So we fucking rented the studio out for like 30 days. And when you weren't fucking jamming, you were at the go-go bar playing pool. That's and, awesome. And getting to know all the dancers. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking. That's fucking great. Hey, uh, you guys, uh, let's do. I uh, we got to do um, record of the week with Sid the Kid. So let's all do it together. Sid the okay? Kid. Okay. Let's bring Sid on. Hey, Sid, what's up? Sid what's the up, Kid, guys? who I go back many years with as well. Oh, what's up? Yeah, too, too, many, too many. Too many. Yeah. Sid, do you have your game tight? What's you up, ready? Bro? I'm waiting for you guys. I've been waiting, oh, waiting, waiting, waiting for you guys. <laughs> oh. Oh. You should forget something, Drew. You forgot my banner and my whole little spiel. Listen, you just came on, bro. All right? Hey. <laughs> I still got to bust the chops. Fucking Sid. Can we do it? Excuse me. I know your banner is important and your show is important, but do you think we could fit in record of the week before we get to your banner and, and, and your fucking Mickey you Mouse show? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Sid the Kid. Wait. It's Sid the Kid. Record of the week. Let's go. Boom. There it is. Sid. Leeway. Oh. All right. All right. I love it. All right, it. Sid, you, Sid, you kick it off, and then we'll bring in the other guys. Go ahead. All righty, guys. So, you know, it was only fitting that I had to pick this, you know, for album of the week. And today, this was definitely, you know, no question to even do this. It was it was a definite. I had to cover this record. So, obviously, if you're wondering, this is Leeway's you know, debut album, titled Born to Expire. Uh, it came out, uh, I believe, in 1989. But funny enough... This was recorded back in uh, in eighty seven. Just with a bunch of delays, it got pushed literally two years later. Now you have to wonder what kind of effect this album would have had if it came out on the release back in eighty seven. You know, lyrically, this is a very you know a very hardcore punk rooted 
uh, you know, lyric wise. But when it came to the mu uh, music, definitely had that nice thrash crossover vibe. And obviously, you could tell the way between AJ's, you know, guitar playing and Michael Gibbons' leads, like it just melds so well. Um, even, you know, this is something I listened to in high school all through like 1990, like pretty much. Even the first track, when you hear Rise and Fall segueing into Mark of the Squealer, how can you not go wrong with that, you know, with just that beginning of a record? And even years later, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Enforcer got uh, tracked over to the New York Hardcore Sunday matinee compilation that Another Planet put out back in 95. And then, of course, 10 years later, it actually even ended up on the Grand Theft Auto 4 LCHC uh, radio station, if you guys played that game. I mean, this record itself, it's, it, you know, it's definitely one of those you can't forget, especially if you're into hardcore or metal. It's like that record that you can't pass up. It's a really good record. Yeah, for yeah, a absolutely. Um, let's... Hey Laz, I know you yes. have a special. I know you have a special connection uh, to this band. T tell us about it and 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 your thought your thoughts on on Leeway. Um, I, well, I mean, I, I always claimed him as an influence, you know, and uh, I've always loved Eddie Sutton. You know, he was always kind when we were younger and a mutual friend to all of us. You know, he was kind of uh, he liked he liked hanging out with the real people, and that's what he was like. And so I, naturally, he grew kinder and closer to us and he kind of became part of our clique many years later you know we know they've had their troubles and tribulations and eddie's had a lot of his own challenges uh, my another mutual brother of all of ours gordon ansis we decided to start up a little uh management company and we wanted to uh hunt down eddie sutton and we heard he had a, a rendition of the band and uh we wanted to come and help him out you know and just to do something fun with some friends, you know, I ended up producing the, the two latest leeway tracks with uh, Dan Nastasi came on board and, you know, wrote some terrific songs with Eddie. And uh, we released Eddie and, uh, you know, and, and began to see this resurgence coming back for leeway, which has been, you know, the biggest uh, treat. And just to see Eddie happy and, and stabilized in life with a family and, and doing his thing has been the true reward, to be quite honest. And, you know, he's actually here with me at the studio, you know, somewhere around the, the complex here. Who And uh, I'm happy that we're going to continue putting out some music with him. And we're going to do, you know, two more uh, 45s next year. You know, I'm also working with the original uh, El Nino uh, lead singer, Jorge Rosado's uh, Marauder, which I produced two tracks, which I plan, Gordon and I planning to release that with some videos sometime next year which is some some real crushers some real banging stuff just trying to like go back and 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 you know and say give a hand to those who 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 missed some kind of direction and and kind of like say hey man let's follow this road together here and let me see if i can you know gordon and i can can lead you on a path so that you can get back to working and, and also it, one of the most influential bands in the crossover genre you know, which has registered and, and, and made noise all over the world and has indirectly influenced a lot of bands all the way to the top. Great choice, Sid the Kid. Thank you for bringing that and, album out. Man, and actually, one other thing, actually, I did kind of miss. Bevan Stone actually did the artwork for that record. For so many people I've seen those T-shirts being bootlegged, whatnot, people wondering, oh, who drew that? Who drew that? And even I had to do a little bit of my research, and that came up. I was yeah. like, oh. Hey, Dave. Hey, hey, Dave. Um, any, any? Does this, uh, does this leeway record uh, reverberate at all with you? Oh, any sort of uh, interesting story? Uh, yeah, it, uh, I, one of my favorite albums. I mean, um, I, I loved leeway. You know, actually, leeway. You know, Eddie was considered to possibly sing for El Nino. Yeah. Oh wow. Know? Yeah. You know, wow. because I, I mean, one thing he impacted. I remember coming to see leeway uh, at the limelight. And one thing that I, I thought it was fucking insane was he came out, Eddie comes out, the band's fucking playing. Eddie comes out and he grabs the microphone and he wraps it around his fucking head like five, six times and then chokes himself and jumps into the crowd. And I was like, man, what a fucking way to start a fucking show, man. Like, are you kidding me? This fucking dude was on fire, you know? He came I out mean, and he came out. I was like, what the fuck? Like, who does that? Who comes out? Fans fucking out, 
wrap a fucking mic around your neck and then go head first into the fucking crowd. Like, Eddie, I was Eddie, so, yeah. Eddie was great, man. I remember, we remember, remember, Laz, we would see Leeway back in, in when that record came out. And I remember they'd come out on stage, Eddie would come out on stage and just yeah. sort of very matter of factly run across the stage yeah. and just dive into the audience and set it off. Some great shows at Irving Plaza, Lamores with the Bad Brains. Yeah. You know, so it, it was very impactful. So it, it was, and and just being him, you know, because he was kind of like, at the time, the most famous person I knew, you know, who was buzzing around town. He was in photographs on the newspaper, Christina Applegate, and all kinds of crazy things. And, but he liked being around, you know, the, the common local players, you know. I think he liked minorities too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it, it's it's been a it's been a great joy sharing times with Eddie and 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 you know just you know seeing him come back and do Europe and America a couple of times and and there's still more life and, and more music and he he's 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 a very prolific artist you know he's deep he's got a lot of things to say I consider him an intellectual a lot of people don't realize how intelligent and so well read he is you know he's reads he's always reading a so book. He's back in New York. We got to get him on the show too. That's for sure, for sure. I told him yesterday. He was happy to hear that. Yeah. Hey, um, Sid. Uh, well done. Tell us about what's going on here. Didn't you do this one already? Well, due to technical difficulties, I mean, come on. With the internet, it's gonna happen, guys. Come on, bro. But hey, hey, it happens <laughs> to you, Drew. It happens to all of us. It's it's life, as you say. It's life. It's gonna happen. Don't anyway, you have to. Show, you know, if you guys are doing, feel free to go over to mixlr.com backslash SDK sound system. This is a rebroadcast I did last week with my gal from Agnostic Front, but mainly we're actually talking more about his art than anything, which I was really psyched about. Honestly, it had to be up to me doing the show, one of the best interviews I've done so far, and it's definitely something you should check out. Good. Well done, yeah. Sid. Well yeah. done, Sid. Yeah. We love having you on the show. You know I bust your balls, but listen, you do your homework. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? And, and I appreciate it, man. Yeah, just the best Anybody, punk rock teacher in New York. In New York way, everybody has to bust each other's balls 24-7. That's, that's the East Coast do. way. On top that's of each other saying, <laughs> hey. That's how we show love, Busting each other's that's balls is the way love. to live. If you can't do that, then how the fuck are you going to live in the first place? That's right. You know, All right. How do you, how do you talk to your friends on the East Coast? Come on, motherfucker. Everything's motherfucker. <laughs> Come on, motherfucker. Right, Let's go, dude. motherfucker. See you later, Sid. All right, that's Sid. Everyone else, I'm like, why are you guys calling each other motherfucker? I'm like, because that's what you do. <laughs> that's it. You know, there you go. We survived Sid the Kid, guys. Oh, he's terrific. Um, man. He's been yeah, awesome. Sid's a part of what makes this show great. You know, yeah. he's a part of what what makes this show great. So let's uh, let's continue on here. Uh, I like this picture of, of you two guys. Uh, oh nice yeah. Of 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 you. What kind of bass is that, Laz? That is an ESP Streamline bass, you know, wow. it hooked me up with some really good nice. stuff throughout the years and, you know, it's a fantastic bass with a fantastic drummer behind me there that sometimes I turn around and look and it's like, dude, how'd you, <laughs> how, how, you know, how, thank you for bringing me here. How did we end up here, you know? I love uh, your drum yeah. set up, Dave. Uh, we'll be playing, we'll be, we'll be playing to a fucking, can't play no more. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, hey, Dave, Dave, are you still playing Yamaha drums? No, no. I've been with DW and PDP for uh, almost nine years now. I'm sorry. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, they, uh, they, you know, they're such an amazing company. Um, they're partners of mine. You know, I, I, I go to Europe, uh, South America, Mexico, and they got a kit waiting for me there. Every, you know, anything I need. Uh, much love out to them. DW and PDP are amazing. Zildjian as well. My other endorser have been with them for ten years. And uh, Vader Sticks, and um, yeah, they all these companies that I work with, I'm extremely happy with. You know, um, I've had chances to move to other companies, but I would never leave these companies just because they take such good care of me. Cool. Um, so you guys, you guys are on, you guys are on Roadrunner. Um, you go on to the Confession, the second record, and things are rolling along with Roadrunner, and you guys establish this incredible. Um, you know, Latin community, worldwide Latin metal community, especially in South America. Tell us a little bit about your career in South America and how really, like, that, that's that's really, that really, really came to the forefront for you guys. I mean, one of the things that, that you know, I, I was really worried about since the beginning, right out of revolution, 
was learning from bands like Propane and running like bands like from Soulfly that it's about international touring. It's about presenting your band internationally, not just in the United States. That's one of the mistakes that a lot of bands make. A lot of bands worry about the US. They worry about the United States and concentrate on singles and everything else. We were trying to concentrate on a worldwide scale on everything, not just the United States. And uh, we we're very fortunate. Roadrunner was an amazing, amazing label. Um, still is, I mean, but they were really good to us. And uh, for us to come out with Revolution and sell, you know, over 450,000 records of that record, uh, and then come out with Confession and do a little more than that, do like 520, we're sitting up on almost a million records sold after our second release. So for us, it was a fucking dream come true. You know, I mean, we put in the work though on the revolution cycle, we toured 23 months out of 29 months. I mean, we toured relentlessly, almost two years, you know? And uh, let me tell you, I remember saying this to Laz, we had an inter we had a, a band meeting and I said to him, well, right before we started touring, I said, listen, all you guys gotta get your girlfriends cats and dildos because you ain't gonna be fucking home for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that vividly because we we're going to tour. Well, I told my agency at that point, I was like, listen, we need to tour. Every fucking tour we get, we're taking. Even if we have to go from tour to tour, we're taking it. And we did. We went out, opened up for Machine Head in Europe. It was our first tour. Then we went out to POD, oh, then to yeah. Rob Zombie, yeah. Lincoln Park, Puddle of Mud, Corn, uh, playing every festival under the sun in Europe. And, uh, yeah, we built a, a real loyal fan base worldwide, you know, and when we got to South America, Brazil, and Chile, it was fucking crazy, man. It was crazy. Like, we were very blessed to have that type of response and to have that kind of connection with all the fans because, uh, you know, we appreciate them. And we always we always hung out with the fans, always, even when we were told not to. They're like, no, you can't go out there. We didn't give a fuck. We just said, fuck it, fuck you. We're going to go out and kick it with them. And got in trouble a couple of times. Got yelled at by the promoters. Like, dude, I, I don't have security to be fucking keeping all these people from you. And I'm like, we don't give a fuck. We wanted to see what they got to say. We want to see if they if they didn't like something, tell me. So I, we knew, it, you know, they didn't like it. So but we had this honest You also it. It. I just told you good things. <laughs> yeah, because you could tell them face to face. Go fuck yourself if you didn't like something, you know? <laughs> Upstate Rick says, uh, Laz, you answer this one. Uh, and, and listen, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a break after this, and then um, we'll come back, and let's talk about what's happening with the band now. We'll take questions. But first, just on the way out, Laz, uh, Upstate Rick says, I hear the Chile shows are brutal. They are insane. They absolutely crush it. It feels – last time we were in Chile, it felt like the, it felt like the floor was going to sink in, and it was probably one of the hottest shows I've ever played in my life. I remember grasping for air and saying, I don't know how I'm going to survive this, pouring water over my head and just feeling people breathing on you. It was great, but imagine that today. <laughs> It'll kill us. Did I tell you one, one shit about Chile. I remember I was play, we were playing the set, and during the second or third song, everybody's looking up and like not looking at the band. This fucking kid had climbed up the fucking whole side oh. and hung on the fucking lighting rod. It was fucking swinging back and forth like a monkey, dude. And I was like, are you fucking this kid out of his He's going to fucking die, you know? Yeah. And then he threw himself on top of the crowd. And that just just added to the whole, like, hardcore element. You know, one of, one of, the, one of the big bands that I absolutely loved growing up was Biohazard. I thought that they were, they were the best live band in, in fucking anything I've ever seen. You know, those fucking dudes were love them, man, and I'm yeah. honored to work with them and do all that stuff I did with yeah. them. They, they, they well, were, you know, a huge influence. When yeah. you went to see fucking Biohazard, you know you were getting every penny's worth of what you were paying to go see that yeah. band. You but were also fearing for your life in that audience because it Dude, was rough. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> you know, that was the true. That was the true marrying of hardcore and metal, to yeah. me. Oh yeah, in music. And they you know? were very also instrumental in, in the New York oh, yeah. movement and keeping it alive because they always gave respect to the to the to the OGs like AF and Cro Mags and Sick of It All. And they spawned you know, a lot that, of bands. A lot of people don't talk about it that much, but Bahas was responsible for a lot of good things coming out in look, New York. Laz will tell you. I remember telling Laz when we were getting ready to go on tour. You remember bringing up Biohazard all the time? All I the said, time. We we need to be a fucking live band like Biohazard. 
Yeah, we got to play with Biohazard and Lemores too with El Nino, which was great, you know, and that was why they were still intact with uh, Evan. Yeah, Yeah. and And you know, I remember telling them, like, hey, we need to model ourselves after them. And if I don't see people going off like that, I'm going to fucking lose it because those dudes know how to handle a fucking stage. And props to them, man, always, you know? Yeah, I want to shout out, I want to shout out John Pedro, uh, a.k.a. Shorty, who, who worked with me and Laz. On, right. on the biohazard videos and typo negative and onyx he, yeah. was, he was along for the ride yeah. on that great run that we did king's um, x as well king's x and super cat and yeah. you know uh, shorty was a big part of it so hey let me let me do the last shout, shout out, out to for shorty. The, let me do the last shout out for he was texting me earlier <laughs> um, let me do the last shout out here and then we'll come back and, and we'll talk about what's happening with the band now and Sounds we'll take good. questions all right awesome well there you have it it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and Your Core Hardcore Fan Page. Not to forget the Texas Silver Rush. The Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of Texas country music scene, Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all of the music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. The client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, and of course, the mighty agnostic front. During this current pandemic, which seems like it's going to last forever, so get used to it, all information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.texassilverrush.com, Joe Romini, and Texas Silver Rush. Also, I know you're sitting there and you're wondering, yo, how can I get the New York Hardcore Chronicles live merch? Well, I'm going to tell you. Don't be shy. I'm going to let it fly. The New York Hardcore Chronicles merch. Uh, we got the we got the New York Hardcore. We got the 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 mug. We got the shower curtain. We got the pillow so you can prop your girl's ass up on it. We got we got uh, the do good things. The do good things will come to you line of stuff just in time for the holidays. If you're watching this show in, in, in a rerun, I, I think even if you're watching it now, underneath, there's, a there's I think, I don't understand why, but all they're showing you is the mug right now. If you click the mug and look at the bottom of that page, you can get to everything else. Um, I'm putting the link, the Lancelot Link Secret Chimp in the, in the, in the uh, chat room. And uh, there it is. Yo, support the show. Buy some merch. Buy some smirch. Also, don't be shy. Don't be a lurker. Uh, Here's the Patreon link again. This is important stuff. It's important stuff that you support the show. This stuff doesn't magically happen. So please, I know I'm, I'm, I'm astonished every couple of days when a lurker comes in from the cold, comes in from, from the darkness and 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 supports the shows. Yes, the socks rock. Yeah, there's 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 socks. Yep, yep. Do good do good things, Lori Dawn. It's it's there. Uh, don't be a Patreon. Join Patreon. Stop lurking. Um, so yeah, it's important. Uh, oh, I'm down. All right, Shorty. You know, buy the hardcore shower curtain, bro. It'll get you laid. Um, what else? What else do I need to mention? The merch, the shows. Oh, yeah, hold on. A couple of other things. Hold on. Hold your horses. As my grandpa used to say, hold your horses. That's a good one, right? You don't hear that much anymore. Hold your horses, young man. All right. Come on now. Look, you, listen. You want to get serious? Hold on. Let me, let me clear the deck here. Let me, th- let me hit you upside the head with this. Listen. Coming up Wednesday, December 2nd, Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols. Really? Yep. Coming on the show. Who would have thunk it? I'm personally really excited about this. A Sex Pistol is coming on the show. How friggin' amazing is that? Do good things and good things will come to you, you friggin' bums. Um, What else? Did I oh, also... Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this one. Yeah, I think I mentioned this last one. But uh, on Thursday, December 16th, from The Offspring and H2O and 
Juliet and the Licks. Juliet Lewis is Todd Morse coming on the show. Handsome guy with a lot of Hollywood with a lot of Hollywood stories. So we're looking forward to that. And then, last one on these. I know it's a lot of shows. We're booked for the next two months. Show's booked for like two months. How about the Global Unity Show with our friends from Hong Kong and from Beijing? This is going to be cool. Lee from Unregenerate Blood and Riz from King Lai Chi. Hardcore from Beijing and Hong Kong. That's coming up Sunday, December 20th. So there you go. All of that. All of this and more, right? Um, I think I got everything. Um, I think I covered everything. Uh, follow me and follow the show on Instagram. Stone Films NYC on Instagram. If you have, if you like myself, have crash landed on this alien planet and you have one of these communication devices, keep in touch with me on Instagram at Stone Films NYC. That's what's going on. All right. What's going on in the chat room? You know, you got question. It's question time. Uh, get ready with the questions. Uh, let me clear the deck. Let's bring, let's bring our, our, uh, our guests back on. Let's find out what's happening. Let me, where is, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You hear? We didn't, we didn't do a, we didn't do a, a, a word of the day. What was, what's the word? We, what's the word of the day? We had, we had flan. Flan was a good one. And then we had ski. What, what's, yes, yes. Jimmy Garcia. Well, yep. Yeah, we all see it when you post, Jimmy. We see that you're out there. What is the question of the day? Huh? Not the question of the day, the word of the day. Scalpel? That's a good one. We, we, get, we did scalpel. No pizza. No pizza talk today. Let's give the pizza sh fucking pizza a break. Okay, here we go. Um, let's bring on Laz. You all right over there? Listen, the ghoul should be the word of the day. Ghoul. Why don't you okay. tell me what a ghoul is? Ghouls. All right, <laughs> listen. The word of the day is ghoul, like Elliot, like Elliot Ghoul. And when me and Laz were coming up, if you let your hair grow a little long, you had what was known as a ghoul. And you'd be like, yo, I'm goulding. And you'd be like, yo, bro, what's up? Are you goulding? So the word of the day is ghoul. <laughs> all right yo, i'm going through it right now yo haul your rock yo haul your rock checking in man what's yeah. up boy yo we missed oh, yeah oh, what's yeah. Up, my dude yeah love the, love the madball man one of the fucking best bands ever I got representing repping madball right now that's fucking hey, badass well, I, I was actually gonna reach out to you hoy about just popping on and saying hi today i i gotta i gotta uh you gotta come on again real soon so Let's let's yeah. These are your bros. Oh man, love all Hoya. you rats. All he's you looking. Rats. He's, let me tell you, Hoya's looking like a Latin lover these days. He he's, is right. Oh, I yeah. Say, man, I look at him. I say, damn kid, I love where you went with this. I know. I started that journey about four years ago, and to bro. see you, you know, well, well, looking, we're getting better as we get as we move along. You know, bro, my it came through on my Instagram feed. I was like, yo, who's this? I was guy? like, dapper oh, down that? here, man. <laughs> That's what's oh. up. Oh, he's gonna crush it, man. I bet he can't wait to go back out and crush it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you know <laughs> I'm not a player, oh, I just crush God. a lot. <laughs> um that said, here you go. Hoya says Laz invented PMA. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. All right, hey, so let, let's talk about this a little bit, Dave. Like, you know, honestly. Yeah, you guys are doing your thing now. I know this little there's been a there's there's been a bit of um a, a big lineup change. And listen, our show's not really we don't dwell on that kind of shit. The bottom line is you guys are moving ahead and doing great stuff, but it would be a disservice for not to uh, for us not to address it. So Dave, tell us a little bit about what's happening here and what's the latest with the band. You know, um when all this went down, you know, uh, we've Laz and I have taken the high road and being classy about it and not really spoken out, you know, we, uh, we keeping things, you know, we think it's weak to go out there and bedmouth somebody and, you know, spread half truths and play the victim and try to get attention. And, um, we just don't, we don't, that's not what we want to do. You know, we want to keep it positive. The band is doing 
better than ever. Um, we have a full album that's recorded. We're in the process of mixing right now. We have uh, we're shooting a, a multiple videos for the new album. Uh, we're shopping a deal. We have about three to four label deals that our lawyers actually going through at the moment. We will announce the signing probably in the next two weeks. Um, and uh, also, we we're very fortunate and very uh, happy to announce that we, we got signed to STG, to Sound Talent Group, uh, who is Tim Borer's uh, agency, booking agency, who has Love of God, Breaking oh, Benjamin, and Muir, Kill Switch that, Engage. Uh, you didn't tell their me that. Tim Borer? Tim Borer, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, you told me. I, I, that didn't ring. Yeah, of course. Tim Borer is an OG in the booking, yeah. in the booking game, man. And you know, and and he, you know, that, that's like we were saying before. That's that's a big part of uh, of the music business. You know, uh, your booking agent is just as important as your record label because if you don't tour, you don't you you, you can't progress. You can't do anything with the band. You know. But uh, moving back to what we we're saying, you know, we we've stepped out of uh, all the situation that was happening that was going down, and uh, we we're very fortunate to get the best guys in in the band. You know, we got. Marcos Leal, who's also sings for a band called Shattered Sun. Um, great kid, man. Fucking hungry as fuck to get shit done. A very, very on top of his game. Um, he's a fucking star, you know, uh, from beginning to end. But uh, best part of it all is that he, he, you know, he's such an easy guy to work with. He's so into the music. He's so into, he's so passionate about the business. And uh, that's, that's half the fucking battle, you know, um, when you lose your passion, um, I can't work with people that don't aren't passionate about what they do anymore, and uh, that was one of the biggest reasons for for, for the for the lineup change. But uh, we also got uh, Marcos, uh, the Alec I said from, for, on, on vocals. We got Jesse Hoyos on uh, lead guitar, who also plays in uh, another band called Sons of Texas, and uh, and Sal Dominguez, who uh, used to be in uh, Upon a Burning Body. That we had the pleasure of hanging out with and meeting, um, in uh, on Mayhem Festival when we toured with those guys, and it was fucking hilarious. We had a lot of fun with those guys. We love Upon a Burning Body, great fucking band, and we were able to connect with him. And uh, when we revamped the lineup, man, this is the the new lineup. And uh, yeah, I want to also point out that Danny, Danny Cotto, our brother, who's been with us since Confession, of course, is back in the lineup with us also, and he's been doing. You know, he did some shows prior. To all the changes, but it's it's, Dan, it's just amazing Danny Cotto, to have Danny with us, you know. It Danny Cotto is a great longest, brother and he's a great the longest member of the band besides Laz and I. Danny has been was in the band for almost ten years, and then he wow. stepped out because he had, he had family stuff that he had to take care of, and and now he's back in the fold. And I mean, dude, playing with Danny to me is like it doesn't get any tighter, it doesn't get any better, it doesn't get any more aggressive. This fucking dude is, is a fucking he's he's a maniac. real deal. He's the real yeah, deal. He's, he's from Newark. He's from I, Newark. I and he's from Newark. Yeah. Yo, dude, I, if he's from Newark, we gotta get him in the bed. For sure. <laughs> we, we, honestly, honestly, I mean I'd say I say this. I was sad to let some people, you know, leave here and there throughout the earlier band's career. But I was very, very sad when when he had to leave uh for a couple of records because of a family situation. But you know, we we back each other up as brothers and we help each other out and we understand, you know, hey, family comes first before fucking anything. Uh, yeah, it you know? doesn't change all the beautiful things and times we share together, you know, and, exactly. you know, do things that were special that, you know, not many people get to experience. So, you yeah. know, you always, but, uh, you'll always have a special place, you know, for, for yeah, those so we, times. We are, we're in the process of doing some, some great guest appearances as well. You know, oh, we yeah, uh, yeah, you sent me that right. Whoa, hold on, let me let me find that. Go on, there's a Go picture on. Of, of uh, yeah, of uh, Sonny from POD, yeah, and Marcos Leal uh, during the sh shooting of the video. Man, yeah. this fucking dude, Sonny, one of the most kindest souls and one of the most beautiful people I've ever met in my life. He's just a cool, cool dude, man, from A to Z, you know. Um, but and he's a big New York hardcore fan too. Yeah, I, I remember that about him. Yeah, I actually remember that about him. Great, he loves great brains. I know that. <laughs> oh, certainly a huge bad brains fan. That's for sure. But yeah. who is it, man? So, so I got a question here for you, Dave. Uh, and I know that this is. Uh, let's start. Let's start doing questions. But um, 
Kirk Frank asks us, Dave, when is the next El Nino video going to be released? We are, you know, listen, it's been ready for about two weeks, but since we are shopping a record deal, we do not, and I'll be honest, you know, I have nothing to hide. We don't want to put out a video until we sign our record deal uh, because it just wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense, you know, to market an album and a new release without having the machine or a label behind it, especially if it's a new label, you know? And uh, we are, I mean, it's been ready. The videos have been ready. We're actually editing two other videos as we go along. So we're gonna start gunning videos left and right once the deal is signed. So I'm hoping that this video will be released either, probably the first week of December is what we're trying to, to, to do it for. Yeah, but we shot three videos already. Three? And, uh, three of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we're, gonna, so, you know, and we're shooting. To start putting them out, man. I mean, that to me is the best. Yeah. The band has we're, sounded since 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 our third record, I think. Yeah. And, and I, I, mean, should, I shouldn't say that. I mean, the fourth record was probably my favorite. So I, it's just <laughs> been a few years that, you know, you begin to, to, to kind of lose touch. But the excitement that's in the air, you know, of these new tracks yeah. and playing with yeah. these guys. Just even the, the vibe of the video is just so beautiful and, and, and energetic and positive. Dude, the weakness, you know, and we get into a room, it just feels we get into a room, and it's like the one thing about uh, about this lineup is that we are here to elevate each other. We're not here to put each other down or, or point fingers, you know? D this band elevates each other. Every single member in this band is so important to the puzzle right now yeah. because, you know, we all feed off each other. We all speak about, we, we'll speak on a daily basis. You know, I talk to every band member practically every single day, you know? Um, and that's something that was missing, uh, the disconnection that I had in the last lineup. And that's something that was missing that we've been, it was a disconnection that actually started about seven years ago and it just got progressively worse, you know? And, um, listen, I, I Sometimes you have to go through shit like that to be able to step into a positive light, into a better situation, you know? And that's the way life is, right? It throws you some fucking fucked up shit along the way so you can come out and blast it off with, with what you got going on now. Well, it certainly sounds like you guys are having a bit of a rebirth, and that's exciting, you know? And, and I, can, I can relate to that, having had a, quite a few rebirths myself. But, mm -hmm. you know, that, that that's exciting, man. And, and you know, and, and I think that just... You know, a lot of years have passed uh, just in, in, in music history. And I think what you guys have gone through, you know, uh, is common for a lot of bands. It's like, you know, you have two guys that, you know, you, you have the passion. You're going to keep moving with it. Yo, those guys are going to go do their thing. Yo, good. God bless. Let them go do yeah. their thing. You guys are going to do your yeah. thing. And, and now you have, you, you have new, new fresh people and, 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 and you're excited again. That's uh, right. It, it's time I mean, for. Look, honestly, and I hate, and I, I'll be a thousand percent. Our business is better than it's ever been since like early 2000, all around. Like I said, it was shooting, you know, we shot three videos. We're shooting three more videos in December, and then we're going to shot another four in January. We're shooting a video for every song on the album. Good. So mm -hmm. we're going to have 10 videos out along with 10 songs. We're going to have some wonderful guests also, and, you know, a lot of the. Yeah. El Nino OGs are going to oh, yeah. be joining us. On I some forgot tracks. to mention that we we have you know we have a uh, Benji from Skindred that's appearing on the track. Um, you know uh, my boy Max G who uh, plays guitar for Falling in Reverse is going to be playing on the track. Um, you know we had AJ from Fire from the Gods appear on the first track that's going to be released. Mascara. I mean this fucking kid. You know it's got a great voice. He's a fucking very good friend of mine and very good friend of the band now. And, he, uh, you know, his band Fire From The Gods are crushing it right now. Fucking crushing it, you know. Um, great things coming from that band for sure. But when we had the chance to work together and uh, do this, it was, we did, you know. Right on. So, and, and, and much back on Sonny from P.O.D., I mean, Sonny is appearing on the video as well. He didn't just appear on the track. He appeared on the video, which... To me, it just cements everything so much, so much cooler to be able to bring somebody into the video that's actually singing on the song, you know? Fantastic. Here's uh, a question from our resident historian, uh, Chucky Brown. He says, in 2005, they did a cover of the Peter Gabriel song, Red Rain. How that's did great. that come about and did they meet him? Laz, you want to take that one? 
Oh, I, I mean, I don't know how we chose that song. I, I know that it, it was a, a song that had a very rural feel to it and had percussion. It was, and, and it was actually it was chosen by Eddie Wall. <laughs> oh, Eddie Wall. You know Eddie. Our, pro Eddie Wall. our producer, which Eddie I mean, Wall. Eddie Wall's been producing El Nino since Revolution. Yeah, he came. Me and he Eddie finished, the, he finished a lot of records the together. Main record. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, he mixed that Revolution record. And he actually did additional production, which came way after Saint Germain had already left the fold. You know, but uh, long story short, we're sitting down. And talking about what song to do, and we wanted, like the last said, a world-sounding song with you know cool percussion. And he's like, Peter Gabriel, why the fuck would you choose anybody else? He's like, Red Rain. And I was like, Red. I never, Rain. Heard, yeah. I never even heard of this song because you know I'm I'm not a Peter Gabriel fan, and the only songs that I know from Peter Gabriel are the big songs, not yeah, the smaller right. songs. Mm -hmm. But we chose Peter uh, Red Rain because of Eddie Wall, and he did a. A phenomenal job. job. It was a great song okay. to play. Here's another one. Let's bank through a couple questions. Uh, Shorty asks, sure. "What's your what's your Shorty. guys what's your guys take on live streaming shows in these days of COVID?" I, I love it. I mean, we've uh, I've already hosted two live stream events, and I've been wanting to talk to you about getting some live stream shows. I got one coming up with the Cannibals here on December 5th. Dead Blow Hammer, Rob Kabula's band, a bunch of other great bands. Live stream, I think, is something that we need to get behind. You know, so that the bands can actually continue to perform, and and if there's support out there for people to continue to show support, so that we can keep bringing music, live music, in some form. You know, yeah, this pandemic is a global thing; it's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. a great way to reach everyone in the world in one show or two shows. Yeah, I mean, this pandemic has really fucked a lot of bands up, you know, and I think that to be able to keep constant contact with your fan base and your friends, and to actually be able to do streaming shows it's important i think it's cool you know and the, the one weird thing obviously that everybody's gonna have to go through is you know how much how do you go off and fucking play and pretend that there's people in front of you i'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be a little weird because we're, we're actually in in the process of talking about it of doing it sometime early next year uh depending on how fast this fucking pandemic uh goes away which probably won't go away till the summer you know at, at the earliest if we're lucky and uh but you know, I'm hoping that it goes away sooner than later, man. Because we have, again, we have a, a, about five, six European festivals that we're confirmed for for summer 2021. We have a headlining uh, run that we have ready to announce actually in about two weeks too for September 2021. Um, we I hope that this shit goes away sooner than fucking later. That was a that was a not fast. Great. Oh, yeah? Is that a, is that in the states? That's that's in uh, Mexico. Mexico. That's Woo! in Mexico. Paco Tepera put that show. What's up, Paco? Yeah, cool. That's one. My, that's my dude, man. Always having our back. We uh, we were one of the few bands to come back to two Nafest uh, back to back. We did 2015 and 2017. Hey, listen. If they're doing it, you know, down down south, it's a smart move to have you guys on the bill, man. You guys are loved <laughs> down there, man. They love you down Thank there. You. Here's a question from our boy, Cesar Chavez. Do you guys plan to release your backlog in vinyl? I've always wanted to. I love, I grew up with vinyl. You know, we grew up with vinyl. I've always wanted to. I've been telling Dave, let's press them we, all up in vinyl and get them out there. We are, we are in touch right now with, uh, with, with Roadrunner um, as of like three weeks ago uh, to one of the guys there. I don't know if I should say his name, but whatever. One of the A&R guys. And uh, we asked him, you know, so he's looking into seeing if he can give us the rights to press the vinyl and uh, press some vinyl for the first two albums, maybe even the first three albums, but definitely for the first two, we're trying to get that rolling. That's cool. Um, oh, Laz, you yes. know what? I just came across a photo. Wait, you know, right. it would be a disservice not to post this photo. Here's a shot of you and me. Here's a shot of you and me. Wait, hold on. Let me let me get this shit straight. Oh yeah, I'm glad I I'm glad I'm I'm kind of looking and making sure I'm not. I hate hate not posting for. But here's a shot of you, Matt, back in the and you and me back in the music video. Oh, I love that photo. I yep. love that. Yes. You and me back. That's in front of 3G stage where I was that's the right. stage manager. But at the time we were doing the music videos, we might have been doing typo negative black number one or biohazard punishment, but right. or whatever. But that was. <laughs> That's in front of three G's, and you know my godfather, 
you know, uh, of the uh, Gabe Dirienzo, you know, that was his place. And he's a, he's an unsung hero in all this because yeah. he attacked me, man. Oh, uh, yeah, he did. He loved you dearly. I and mean, you got to do a lot of stuff in his studio as well. Yeah. You yep. know? So no, that was a great, those brings me back but, such wonderful memories uh, of that time. Yep. I tell you something funny about like when you guys keep talking about the video company that you guys used to work out together on uh, the yeah. videos that Latch used to promote. I remember one of our real close friends who became our tour manager, Benji Gold. You yeah. remember Benji Gold? I do. I do. Okay. Yeah. Benji Gold is one of my dear friends. And he's definitely that's me, me and Mark Rizzo when he came out with Sofa in Dallas. Uh, we had a, a, a great connection, a reconnection uh, with Mark. One of the best guitar players in 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 the scene. Okay. Uh, very talented dude, and we're actually talking about uh, just a great having, dude. having the original lineup uh, record a song together. Um, Jardel Paisante, Roger Vasquez, Mark Rizzo, uh, Laz, and myself with Marcos with our new singer, and about and also doing we a wanna, song. We want to bring in also you know Jorge and Danny Gomez. You know Danny Gomez. Track. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Rizzo's guitar playing. Man. Oh man, I'm a big fan too. Who isn't? He's a terrific player. Wow. And, and let me tell you something. He's he's got a heart that's as beautiful as his guitar playing. I love when he does the Instagram live. Yeah. I, I, he's like he's like wailing away, and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" And he's talking to the audience, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I mean, I, 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 maniac." That's all he did. I mean, he played guitar all day long. Anytime he had a moment, there was. That's there's all he did. Guy, there's a guy that so deserves the success he's having. He is that's such it. a committed musician and has such an incredible work ethic. And 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 you know, like like you know, like you two guys also. You guys and Laz. Listen, I can say this, man. I've known you a long time. You know, it's like you know, we 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 knocked around together for years. You know, mm -hmm. and you always have music in your heart and, you know, you found your way, man. You know, a couple things broke your way and you ended up hooking up with Dave and you made a career in music. And I'm really proud of you, man. Thank you, brother. Likewise. And I've always uh, been proud of you. Thank you. Thank Means you. a lot, man. Um, back to Benji Gold, right? So I, this is a really fucking funny story. So Lass brings Benji into the fold because Lass and Benji were bros in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing. I'm playing a show. And I forgot who I was playing it with, but we're playing it in. Remember, in, um, what's the name of the club? McDougal last. Oh, that was the the Pyramid Lounge. No, the it wasn't pyramid the Pyramid on Avenue A. Yeah, it was the it Pyramid. Was Coney Island High. High. It was Coney Island High. Coney Island High. Coney Island High. So right. I'm fucking outside. I just finished playing a show, so I'm outside. You know, for last <laughs> put fucking Benji to fuck with me and prank me. So. He comes up to me and this I see this little fucking short guy with glasses come walk up to me and he's like, Hey, are you Dave Shavari from MOD? And I was like, uh, yeah, why? He's like, You look a lot fatter in person than you do in patients. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to fucking murder him. I was about to murder him. I was like, you motherfucker. And then the last co co comes crawling across the street. He's like, no, no, he's with me. We were just fucking around. We're just fucking around. I was gonna murder this kid. And the biggest balls come up to me and say, you look a lot fatter in person. <laughs> Benji's a great dude, great dude. He, he later on ended up becoming a tour manager for El Nino and, yep. and, and ended up managing, partnering up with you in the management company and managing the band as well. He's really close yeah. to Tom Capone, who's playing with Antidote now. You know, I met Tom Capone actually through Benji. Like personally, where we got to chat, you know. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't but, I mean, hear you, Drew. Benji Gold, I mean, you know, he's he's part of the team, man. He's, you know, he's at our back since day one. And, uh, you know, funny. He became a tour fan. manager. He, it's funny, you know, he's, he's a good friend. We had a lot of fucking fucked up times on tour when he was tour managing. And we were an asshole to him. And he never <laughs> lets me fucking live. He, he never lets me live it down. If I was ever an asshole to Benji Gold, that motherfucker wrote it down somewhere in some little fucking piece of paper and put it in his back in his wallet because we talk about it now. And I'm like, hey, he's, I'm like, how's your day? He's like, it's good, but it's not about as good as about that one day when we were outside Urban Plaza when you were an asshole to me because of this and that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, motherfucker, what are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Insane, man. Hey, listen, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. It was great. 
I wish you thank all you. the best with your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Know, you. I have hey. no doubt. I have no doubt that you guys are going to be okay. You're going to go out there and you're going to kill it. You have an incredible thank work you. ethic. You have an incredible work ethic, Dave. You always had Laz. Thank you know, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys got it going on. Hey, can I just quickly send a shout out? I mean, since it's shout out okay. Sunday, hey, bro, let me I'm getting there. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Go on. Me too. Me too. Okay. Everybody, every oh, hold your horse. <laughs> hold your horses. Hold your, hold your horse. <laughs> uh, so you know. So that said, uh, Laz, is there anyone that you would like to shout out on the shout out Sunday? Uh, I'm gonna. It's a bunch of people, so I'm gonna show you really quick. I want to shout out my boy, my bro, Gordon Ansis, GNL Management. You know, love him to dear. My brother Rick, my brother Roland, uh, Gabe, who hooked me up with these fucking terrific rings. Uh, Kings never die. Uh, all my bands that I've been working with, Sound War Studios, the Cyclorama, and the, oh, more importantly, my lady at home and my wonderful, brand new, twenty-month-old son, Wolfgang, my Wolf. I love you dearly, son. I do oh, everything yeah. for you now. I had to post this photo of uh, you and your brothers in in, in Broomhelda. Yeah, which is how I awesome. fondly remember you guys. You know, sp uh, spending a lot of time together. But uh, also, you know, uh, oh, Jimmy Garcia! Shout oh, out to Jimmy, Jimmy Garcia, Garcia and Abel and Abel Garcia. I definitely want to do a Garcia. shout out to as well. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so yeah, that's that's the uh, the Broomhelda. Also, the Cyclorama, the Cyclorama Studio. You got that show coming up. That's Let's right. see how you know, we'll see how that goes, and then maybe sure. we'll do, we'll do an A seven thing, a reunion thing there. I love Let's, it. I got you know three hundred bands that are hawking me to play. Let's so, do it. Let's do it, man. Yeah. So that said, Dave, you're on. Well, uh, definitely, uh, like Lass said, you know, uh, Lass's new baby boy, who's 21 months, like he's like my nephew. Wolfie is a beautiful boy. Uh, nobody, a lot of people don't know this, but Lass is actually my oh, daughter's my goddaughter. Goddaughter. Oh, my goddaughter. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So my daughter, Tiana, my, my daughter, Tiana. And I think that a big part of being of making the change of being a better person and being, I, I definitely thank my wife Haley for the support and my daughter, because when my daughter was born and when I uh, got married to my wife, 13 years now, um, everything changed for me. You know, I had to provide for my family and I had to actually be, uh, become a better person, a role model to my, to my kid, you know, and uh, love them to, to death and always, always do everything that I do for them. Fantastic. Um, well, I think we covered it. And uh, you guys are welcome back anytime. That was a really fun Thank show. You, brother. I love you, Jim. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you for you having us, man. Everything you've done and all that you still do. It's my pleasure. Much and I love you, man. Laz. I'll talk Thank to you. you soon, Dave. I'll talk to you soon, Laz. All right, yeah, brother. Peace. So long. Love you guys. Well, there you have it. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our, our guest today was from Il Nino, uh, Dave Chivare, and Laz Pina. Uh, of course, we're sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Reel, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records, and Skateboards, and your core hardcore fan page. What the hell's going on in the chat room today, Brian? What's going on, man? You all right, Brian? What's happening out there? Get a little crazy in the chat room. Just a, just, just a reminder, um, coming up this Wednesday is Keith Burkhart from Cause for Alarm. We are stoked on that. So that's going to be a good, real old school New York hardcore New York. Oh, so Brian, you're in a difficult problem. Well, come on on to the come on into the chat room anytime, and it's 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 it could be your destination. Anybody out there has a problem, come on in. You're welcome here. Not to not to be silly, but absolutely, this is. Hey, it's a worldwide community and, you know, thank you. It was a great show. Yeah, your peoples are here, bro. Your people are here. We are your people and we are here. Uh, go to the team page. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Uh, what's happening, Johnny Rock? Hear me call in, Johnny Rock. All right. Um, what else? What does the chat room mean? You're in the chat room. The fuck you want me to do? Smoke it for you too? You're in the you're in the chat room, fucking guy. You know, um, hey Lori, yeah, 
It was good. Good show. Awesome show. What's up, Kirk? Yeah. What does the chat room mean? That's a good one. Um, yeah, it was great. Yep. Jimmy Garcia, you know, you're welcome back anytime, Jimmy. You know, Shorty, I love you, bro. It was nice seeing you on here today. Um, so you have to come back. Larry Kelly, my man. You know, absolutely. Um, be nice. I know. Listen, I am nice. I just, you know. There you go. I know, yo, my Kango, yo, my Kango game. Thank you. Thank you. Now the shit, now. Now, now I feel really good about the show. Now that my Kango game, my Kango game is tight, son. Like I'm all about my Kango game. I mean, I, like you know, I bring, I, I'll do a tour of my Kangos and like I'll make it rain in here, bro. Bra. You know, I'll make it rain in here. Um, oh, you took care, you took care of Al Baril for me. Don't worry, his wife is coming on. His wife's coming on the show, so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Al Barillo will be back. Um, yeah, explain to Brian what's going on here. Yeah, can go game number one. Um, hey, I'm holding it down. We're all holding it down. We're all part of it. Honestly, it, it's all, it's all, it's all. Thank you, Philip. It was a good show. They're all good. I mean, ill can ill can go. <laughs> like there you go. What was the, what, yeah, Ill Kango. I've always been, I love Kangles, you know. It was between, today it was between the Kangle and one of Isaac's New York. It, it was like the Kangle or the e, or one of Isaac's, you know, New York hardcore hats, you know. So I, I went with the, I went with the Kangle. Yeah, the Kangle show would be, oh, listen, you know what? I know there's not a lot of people still on, uh, but I want to say, should we do a holiday show, like a special bonus show? Should we do like a, I don't know, like a New Year's Day show or, or a Christmas show? I mean, does that make sense? I mean, like maybe like something different, like a nice long show, you know, everybody checks in. I mean, would you watch that? Does that make sense? Should we do like a special holiday show for, for, for the gang? And maybe we'll do like another people's, you know, people's choice show where like everybody, all you people come on, we'll do that kind of thing. All right. got, yes, do a holiday show. Yes, do it. Flang. All right. And we have a winner. Flan goal. And we, and we have a winner. Holiday show for sure. Holiday show for sure. Upstate Rick. Yes. Um, am I going to dress like Santa? No. Um, we can get some egg creams and chili. The crew says yes. So here, here's the next question. Um, I guess, I guess we'll think. I, I guess like a Christmas. Does it make sense to do Christmas Day or New Year's Day? Like, how should that look? I'm open to suggestions. Please post in the page because um, I, th I think it'd be a cool thing to do. Um, you know, a festivus for the rest of us. Have Murphy's Law play live. Okay, you can pay for them. You can pay for them if you want. I'm sure they'll play. Um, Flantastic. There you go. Um, holiday show. Uh, Christmas Day. And we have a, we have a vote, uh, a bid for Christmas Day. Listen, man, I'll do a Christmas Day show. I'm cool on Christmas Day. Like, right, you know, I'll do a Christmas, Christmas Day, Christmas Day. Maybe we'll do a Christmas Day show. Can you get Dr. No on the show? You know, um, Doc has some health issues right now. I've actually, um, it's been a little chatter. Doc has some, some, some pretty serious health issues. Um, I'm not sure if he'd really want to come on the show right now. Um, three months for Ramadan. We'll do, a, we'll do a marathon for three months. That's cool. Um, eight days a week. Hanukkah song. We'll do a Hanukkah show. Die, die, hey, no, die, hey, no, die, no, hey, hey, die, die, hey, no. Um, maybe the pandemic will be over by then. Was that you, Goldie, that was asking me what I'm doing for Thanksgiving? Was that you? Somebody was asking me. Get, yeah, yeah, I got to get Scott Earth on. Scott Earth deserves to be on the show. Absolutely. 
he 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 deserves it. Um, a a absolutely. Um, yep, yep. Don't forget. Um, just like a what? Some of us really uh, wish I was Jewish. All right. You got any Jewish in you? You want some? <laughs> there you go. Uh, get JJ and Harley on the show for Thanksgiving. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. I got. If you believe that, I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Um, so, all right. Uh, Thanksgiving, um, I think I'm going to go down to Florida to be with Arnie. So we'll get Arnie. We'll get Arnie on the show again. Um, uh, I think I got. I got Arnie's down there by himself, and and I, I got to go down there um, and spend some time with him. So um, that's what's up you now. So I can only you know I go back and forth. Uh, let's see, holiday party with fire strippers, stage diving, slam dancing, alcohol, graffiti, skateboarding. Let's fucking end the year right. Okay. Sure, why not? I like that. Let's hope so. Your dad is the best when he's on the show. Best guest hands down. <laughs> you hear that, Dad? He's probably watching right now. Um, you know? He's probably on it. You know, we all want to hear words of wisdom uh, from Arnie Stone. How about Paul Barra? No, I'll reach out to Paul. Yep. I'll reach out to Paul. I'd love to have Paul on the show. You know, he has, a, Paul has an open invitation. I'd love to have him on the show. Um, hey, listen, we got a lot of shows coming up. Uh, next up is Keith Burkhart. Then we got Jay Pita, Eugene Robinson, Moby. Holy shit, Moby's coming on the show. And then Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols. Then Mike Judge, Nancy Burrill with her new book out. Excited about that. Get into some old school Philly stuff and some Boston stuff. Gary Meskill. Um... Then uh, the Global Unity show. The show's booked for the next two months. So, you know, Eddie Leeway. You know, Eddie Leeway is on the to-do list. Um, yeah, we got Mike Judge coming up. Yep. I'm always reaching out to Daryl. I've tried. I'm always trying to get Daryl on this show. You know, a live show. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Gary Meskel's a good one, Gary, for sure. From one Gary to the other, Gary Meskel. Nancy Burrell, that's right. Listen, we need more girls, women, gals on the show. Um, good morning from Melbourne. What's happening, mate? All right. You know? Siv. Yes. Siv's on, Siv's on the to-do list. There's people that are like, I just haven't got to them yet. And the show's booked for two months. It's like, believe me, we're going to get to Sid. Karen Black. That's interesting. Karen Black. That's out there, man. Wow. She's, you know. Karen Black's, yeah. She's, oof. Uh, you know, that, yeah. Of course I remember her. I'm friends with her. She's awesome. Um, Kendra. Sure. Absolutely. She's a legend. You know, Kendra is a legend. Yeah, of course. She's always naked. Her naked is her thing. She's a performance artist and she's naked. She does naked things like good for her. She's awesome. You know, Tommy Rat, BJ Pappas. Look, I've said it before. I'll say it again. We gravitate to people that want to be on the show and that are fans of the show, you know, that, that, you know, want to be a part of it. So those people come on before I have to go chase somebody down. Actually, you know who I'm about to, to connect with, who I got to get down with is Des Kadena from Black Flag and the Misfits and all that. Uh, I got Des, um, I got Des. Yeah. And, and Robert Hogg, you're right. What's happening now is people see the show and they see, the interaction of the show. Look, I'm okay doing what I do, but it's you people in the chat room and it's this sort of community that makes this show somewhat different and makes it special and why people want to come on. So, so there you go. Um, Brendan, Brendan has an invitation open as well. So, all right, enough of me talking about me. 
uh, let's clear the deck. I want to say goodbye. Uh, I want to thank you all. Uh, it was a great show. Uh, lots of lots of lots of good stuff. And um, take care of yourselves. I will see you on Wednesday with Keith from uh, Cause for Alarm. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you.